it uh, looks like we're live. Sure does, Michael. So, uh, how is your Christmas, Peter? Yeah, yeah, uh, it's good. It's good. Did uh, did the whole Zoom meeting with uh, my parents, but um, I think uh, my mom was using a very ancient 2009, 2010 laptop or something. So the uh, and it's weird because the internet is usually pretty good at the the house in Vancouver, but. I think it was the computers. It's really slow and there's a lot of lag. So we'll probably do a pickup day and have another chat. But uh, yeah, it was cool. Virtually exchanged gifts, you know, shipped stuff over to them. They shipped stuff over to me and then we opened it on camera. So yeah, how was yours, Mike? What's uh, what's happening with you? It's almost like you should have gotten her like a, like a, a modern day netbook or something like that. I ship her the computer in order to do Zoom. Yeah, yeah. That, exactly. That nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. Like friends came over Christmas Eve. Um, I talked to like my brother and his kids on Christmas day, talked to my mom and stuff. Oh, nice. So, um, you know, none of them live in Vancouver. So it's just like, um, my mom doesn't have like a smartphone or a computer or internet. So she's like anti tech. She's like a Luddite, like just refuses. I think she has like voicemail on her rotary phone like she oh no yeah so she has like an old like rotary phone from like the 50s that's like her phone does she have an answering machine that uses tapes you know no it's it's like electronic voicemail but you have to like access it by like rotary like dials and stuff all the like yeah exactly please it's your password yeah so yeah um it's just it's unfortunate because like I can't share photos with her on Facebook. I can't like, you know, yeah, show yeah. her anything. Whereas like my brother, like he's pretty tech It's savvy. instant. Yeah, So it's exactly. like FaceTime, like on my, on our iPhones and stuff. So it's like a lot easier. Uh, that's nice. Yeah. It's always good to have, you know, technology's brought us closer together than ever. I mean, back in the day we had to do, well, fax and like those, uh, um, I don't even know what they called it. There was something before fax that they used to like, uh, talk to, um, uh, delegates. Maybe is like Morse uh, code, not the BBB. B- no, but like when they talk to delegates in other countries, they're like, "Don't bomb us," and then it takes like three days, and they're like, "Oh, whoops, we already bombed you like yesterday." I just got your little email thing today, back in you know way back in the day. Yeah, like um, letters. Yeah. Oh, we you know what's funny about this chat. Uh, right when I mentioned that uh, my mom's computer was dying, she's actually watching this live right now. And she said, girl, stupid internet. So that's great. Hello, mom. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone is Hi. here. And let- <laughs> that's right. Uh, let us tip it off with letting you guys know what today's all about. It's going to be just a casual day. It's a wrap up of basically the 10 years, 12 years we've been in business, kind of funny things we've gone through, how we got to where we were to where we are now and our favorite e-readers. And that was it. Telex. Someone, uh, my mom actually said Telex operator. That's right. You would like Telex something over to Germany telling them not to destroy your country, but you know, there's a time delay and it took X amount of days, etc. So yes, we're also going to be answering your guys' questions live today. So you can really weigh in on the conversation. You don't have to wait till the end of the show. So yeah, uh, Mike, let's kick it off and let's start talking about some stuff. Well, let's talk about new devices because this is always super exciting. Um, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, Hisense uh, announced two phones. Yes. And um, let's let's call it up here. Yeah, W7, guys. Uh, okay, so um, this is a 5G... 6.7 inch e-ink phone so it's not like it's not it's about as tall as your kindle but it's like not as like wide because it's just like you know the width yeah. and, and height yeah. is like different than your kindle so it, it sounds like it's like a big phone but it's probably like no more tall than like an iphone like 12 pro max like in yeah you know height. that I'm, I'm measuring my phone right now. My phone is 6.5, not the screen, but the actual body. So it's actually going to be bigger than like your average, uh, like iPhone 11, um, non pro. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a big, that's going to be a big screen. But you know, what's interesting about this is that Hisense made two color phones and this phone is bigger than six inches, which means Mike. Yeah. So let's just talk about this yeah. before we kind of go on to that. Um, so yeah. 
This is a 300 PPI display and it's going to run Android 10. Now, Hisense doesn't have like Google Play or anything like that. So you think of Android 10 as like security, like it has the latest security, like upgrades, like, you know, this is like the latest OS that's like on all phones. Like Android 11 is like in beta. It's not going to like see you know, a mainstream release on any type of phones until like sometime next year. So this is about right. as big as you can get. But yeah, I mean, um, quad core processor, six gigs of RAM, <clears throat> 128 gigs of storage. Uh, it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but also high yeah. uh, hi-fi amplifier. So you're going to get like good quality music. So you know what what has Hisense done with this to like you know other than adding 5G and, and a larger screen? Well, they've done a few different things. Uh they uh have implemented a system to eliminate distractions when you're reading. So it was almost like what Kobo did on their tablets, where like they killed all notifications, you're not gonna get any type of like you know uh anything any type of notifications like app updates like right. more updates, things like that, you know, your Facebook, your clash of clans, like you're not going to get any notifications. Uh, you could also read this in, um, uh, landscape or portrait. I think it says, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, they have added like better contrast, like for reading and stuff like that. So they have like a new rendering engine for their, like their ebook like system. So they're not using yeah. the ebook, uh, reader that was on prior high sense phones they've actually built this from the ground up and it also has a front lit display as well so uh you could like you know use it now one of the things about this high sense phone is that it's you know released in china but they support all the major bands in the uk canada the us so like at&t t-mobile it'll work with like all these things that's like the most Telus. important thing is that it does have the band support a lot of people buy these because these are the only guys constantly and consistently making an e-ink smartphone from any sort of manufacturer that we know to catch you guys up again hisense is a very big company they make you know refrigerators and hi-fi systems and tvs and stuff they're a very big company so for them to make an e-ink smartphone consistently with like six different models it, it it bodes well for them and bands are important because everywhere has different bands yeah so you know, this isn't just like a Chinese language phone. Like it, it supports like it's Android. So during a setup process, just like a typical Android phone, you just select your language, yeah. select your country, and it'll be the UI will change, the keyboard layout will change. So in Canada, I'll have the option of English and French. You know, uh, if you live in you know, you know Mexico or Spain, you know your entire UI and everything will be in that's Spanish. Right. So yeah, that's right. Uh, Hisense is really good with supporting that. So that's the first phone that they announced. It's uh, going to be uh, retailing for about four seventy nine uh, when it comes out uh, January first, and they announced a second phone called the A seven CC. And oh man. This is going to be, there's no like official pictures other than this because like Hisense had like a big like product unveiling or whatever, but they never actually showed the color phone yet. Uh, it's coming out February and it's, um, that's cool. It's using the second generation e ink Kalido. So this is using like e inks technology that they just finalized in December for, for a release in February. So, uh, better great you know if you had like a, a prior high sense phone like yeah, the yeah. a5cc the a5 pro cc uh the only two color phones that really existed uh this will be able to display more color uh a better front lights better grayscale yeah. saturation um e ink has also changed the regal waveform controller to boister the refresh rate so this will probably be like the best color phone uh that is yeah available that is running e-ink so you know what's more important about this though mike is not so much that it's a phone not so much that it's high sense the fact that it's bigger than six inches because up until this point we've seen 5.75 5.4 or whatever and then we've seen six across four different manufacturers this is the first time it's going to be bigger than six which shows this is going to be the second generation of uh e ink Kaleido, e the color e-ink that we all know so that's that's the biggest takeaway from this 
Yeah, so little is known. It's going to run the same internals as like the A8, uh, A7 uh, 5G. Yeah. So this will be a 5G phone as well. Uh, the only thing is just like they're adding in like a color filter array and using Ian Cleo right. too. So, you yeah. know, once we get our hands on this sort of like mid-February-ish, this is going to be like a game changer. And like... That's cool, yeah. We know that at least two e-readers are coming out January, February, March-ish by like two different companies. So there's going to be a, like a, an avalanche of like color devices available in like the first couple months of like um, 2021. So this is like super exciting from like an e-ink point of view, like color 2021 is like going to be about color. So if you yeah. guys like want a <laughs> color note taking device, a color phone, like you know, a 7.8 inch color, just e-reader. That's just an e-reader and nothing else. Or like a 10.3 inch color note taking device. I mean, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff coming out this year. And it's like, I wish I could tell you guys about it, but I can't. Now, a lot of stuff is going to be coming out and you know that we are going to be taking pre-orders anywhere we possibly can, because with these devices, a lot of them have pretty volatile stock situations. Now, that doesn't mean when a phone goes out of production that it's no longer supported. It will continue to be supported. You'll get warranty. You'll get, uh, you know, updates, stuff like that. But a lot of the times, these color devices come and go. So that's why we take pre-orders to make sure you get in line fast. Good example is the Poke 2 Color. That came and then went away in one day in their initial uh, Russian release. And then it came again and then went away in about a month and a half. So, and here's another example Michael's showing you. The Hisense Q5 came out, 60 days later was discontinued, and then for about three months, gone. Now suddenly it popped up again. Our distributor says, yes, we can supply you with Hisenses again. So we're said, well, let's do it. Yeah, so, you know, we've talked a lot about Hisense today. Uh, their Q5 is something that we reviewed like two or three months ago. Like uh, in yeah, the summer. a couple months back. Yeah. Uh, so it's the first RLCD tablet. So think of it as like a monochrome tablet with no backlight at all. It's like yeah. totally dependent on environmental light in order to like, you know, read what's like on the screen. Yeah. And it's it's pretty good. Like it's a 10.5 inch, like basically an, R an LCD tablet. So you're going to get like the same refresh rate as you would like on a typical Android tablet or like an iPad or something like that. So you can watch videos, you can play games, you can use apps and you won't get any of the, the limitations of e-ink in right. terms of like a certain refresh rate. You're going to get like an awesome refresh rate. So it's like, you know, um, the only thing about the, about it is like the resolution isn't the best. It's like, you know, 1280 by 800, 150 PPI, but it is a 10, like a 10.5 inch display, but it has like a massive 5,000 milliamp battery, Android 10 quick charge. Um, yeah, it's really good. Like, you know, we, I, I believe we unboxed it. We did. And we reviewed it. Recently. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was um, that was a pretty cool device, and uh, honestly, it's uh, oh, that's the ad. Yeah, it's a pretty cool device, and um, it, it to to let you guys know, it is not e ink, but it sure looks like it. It's very very conforms to the uh, ambient light, whether it's the light from outside, the light from your overhead. It's very cool, and it looks very like you know, uh, liquid steel kind of thing. It, it it looks like the the image is right up against your face because it's not traditional. LCD LED, it's a reflective, which means it feeds off of the light. You turn your lights off, you can't see it. Just like an e-reader without a glow light, of course. Yeah, totally. So these are like, uh, the Hisense Q5 is available now. Yeah. The A7 5G is coming out in January. That's exciting. And then the yeah. A7 uh, CC is coming out in February. So yeah. like, you know, the first few months of the year, there's like a bunch of confirmed stuff coming out. And there's like a few other products coming out January, February too. So right. as we get closer to the date, I'll be able to talk to you guys more about it. But uh, think about color and think about 
devices that are bigger than six inches and that's what we have that's in store cool. for us and and not like five or six hundred dollars like these like these high sense phones are like you know five hundred dollars plus it's it's not the cheapest thing to buy but with e-readers limited functionality no cellular connection you know less memory uh, you yeah. know less of a processor so <clears throat> uh, you know obviously costs go down so you know you know a few hundred bucks is what you're going to be able to pay for like the next generation of color e-readers yeah, as Mike told you guys last time, putting the color filter on a device doesn't instantly make it hundreds of dollars more. That's not the case. So, um, yes, I know that those Hisense phones, someone actually uh, popped up and said, uh, oh, it's almost $500. Well, it comes from Hisense. Hisense is a very big international brand. And remember, every year that goes by, things are getting more expensive. Look at the iPhone. I think it's like $1,800 for the absolute max level in some markets. So phones never used to be that much. Phones were like, you know, $99, $129 for phones back in the day. So yeah, things are getting more expensive and e-readers are not the most mainstream thing, but they keep with the times and they have to play ball. They can't sell their, they can't produce something at $300 cost and sell it for $199. It doesn't make any sense. They have to play ball and production costs go up, labor costs go up. That's the reality. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got to look at the last generation of high sense color phones. They didn't have 128 gigs of memory. They had like no. 32 or 64. Yeah. They didn't have six gigs of RAM. They had like two, you know, so uh, they didn't have 5G. So, I mean, all those extra things add to the cost. Uh, not to mention that they had 5.84 inch displays. They're, you know, they, they've gone and like, instead of a five and, you know, five and a half inches, they've gone to like 6.8 inches. So, you know, Hisense is kind of building these phones as a, a hybrid phone and e-reader because most people have their phone in their pocket all the time. They're listening yeah. to Spotify, like on their wireless headphones or something. Um, you know, they're they're reading the news or reading something while they're waiting for an appointment or things like that. And with an e-ink phone, you don't have to charge it every day like you would like Android or high like um, that's exactly you know, it. They, yeah. You would charge it like every month, and it has quick charging, so you can get it up to like from zero to fifty in like twelve minutes. So. You know, that, that's that's a big thing that we saw in 2020 is that people keep thinking that these e-ink devices are e-readers. Somebody said, uh, somebody messaged us and said, um, uh, I need this app. Does it work on the Note 3? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, it only works on tablets. Does it work on the Note 3? And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the Note 3 is not actually an e-reader. It's like, isn't it like a Kindle? And then, you know, over all these messages pile up and we're just like, you know what? We should really tell people this a little bit more. E-ink devices, just because it has an e-ink screen on it doesn't mean it's an e-reader. doesn't mean it's a 512 MB RAM, four gigabyte storage, you know, that your calculator could outperform. No, no, no. The Onyx Books devices, for example, are Android 10, octa-core processors, more RAM that you can shake a stick at. You can watch videos on on them on the color devices you can watch color videos and that's exactly what mike is saying is that hisense isn't trying to be uh, an underachieving e-ink device they're trying to be the device you're going to switch to the one you're going to have in your pocket it's that's high end they, yeah that's totally. exactly it and that's why they have accelerometers gyroscopes they have gps sensors just because it has an e-ink screen that's just the display panel the internals are through and through massively flagship smartphone the the battery's 4700 milliamp I mean, iphones don't even have that so you know what i mean it's like uh it's hard to break down that barrier of people's mindset thinking e-ink devices mean kindle means barnes and noble nook because that's not the case anymore the 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 poke 3 is an octa-core six inch device it is in no way to be compared to a Kindle. The screen is still e-ink, sure. The Onyx can play videos and download Angry Birds and the Kindle can't. So, you know, there is a divide, there really is. It's not so much apples and oranges. It's like like Granny Smith and Macintosh kind of thing. You know, they're the same thing, but they're just different types kind of thing. Uh, totally. Uh, we're going to do some questions just uh, kind of off and on um, because there are a bunch of questions that come in and we told you guys we're going to kind of answer as live as we can. Uh, Mike, when are we going to see you guys reviewing the Super Note A5X? There was a little bit of a kerfuffle there with everybody around that. Uh, yeah, we won't be able to like review it until like, I don't know, it comes out. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't think they're yeah. sending us like an early review unit. 
Uh, we've been a partner of Supernote for many years, and we actually gave them all the momentum they needed to uh, become what they are today, uh, based off of them using our names at trade shows and stuff like that. And that's all great. But uh, uh, they've chosen to uh, take the reins on this. And their all their partners that they've worked with will not get samples, will not get review samples, and will not be able to sell it until they say so. So um, kind of, that was a little bit of a shock. But um yeah, that that was the uh, situation there. Uh, yeah, Mike. you know, my impression is super note is that um, they don't want people reviewing it until like enough people have bought it because they don't want they don't want like negative reviews or, or reviews that are impactful yeah. uh, to influence people's buying decisions. So Which is like fair, but not fair because it's like sure everyone wants positivity around their stuff, but the device should have the right to be what it is. You know what I mean? It should be released into the world and received as as it is, as the device is. Some people get the Kindle like, oh, Kindle is a piece of garbage. I hate this. And some people say this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So yeah. it's fair to have that, and we 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 wish that we could sell the A5X because. We have a long-standing partnership with uh, Supernote. We sell all their stuff. They're, they're, they've been great to us. They ship things out very quickly. Uh, we all come together to handle any sort of uh, warranty concerns or repairs or anything. It's, it's all synergy. But this device, they've, just, they've, they've taken a step back, and they're just going to uh, control the narrative in their favor, I guess, until said otherwise. So, um, Yeah, so, you know, that, that's basically it. Like, they, they just want to sell it themselves. Uh, they cut off all their distribution partners because they just want to make, you know, obviously if you're a company that manufactures them, you have a higher profit margin if you sell it yourself for versus like if you go through distributors and you're just taking a little bit, you know, you're offering dealer prices. So you're not making as much per unit as you could is if you sold it yourself. So uh, yeah. this is maybe this could, the, the, you know, the direction that Supernote's going into where like they're not going to send early release you know, review units to media. Um, they're just going to, uh, they're almost doing what Remarkable did. Where like, I was going to say that, yeah. Uh, they, they're doing pre-orders until like mid-January. And yeah. like once all the pre-orders like are sold out, you know, they're going to say, oh, the next shipment's available in March or April. Yeah. Because like they're, they're, they don't manufacture like thousands of units at once. They're a smaller yeah. company. So they can only, you know, they take people's pre-order money take that and then manufacture the units she's wrecking the whole set here yeah i uh i mean and that's fair i mean it is their own product they can do what they want but it's just it, what i'm saying it came as a shock and that is the answer that we won't be able to give you any coverage on the a5x um or even talk about it in any capacity until later um, so someone else said, uh, this is a good question too. I was saving this. It's very clear. You guys love your customers and community and you're very interactive with these live streams. So I have a question. Why don't you guys answer YouTube comments on videos? And I, I'll, I'll start this off. Um, we used to answer every single comment, but to be completely honest, that's when we were only getting a, a couple views per video. Now we get upwards of half a million, 700,000 views. Our remarkable two video got 300,000 views. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to answer every single comment like we used to when we were kind of small back in 2013 we answered everything because the scale was there but now we get we're, we're up to 91,000 subscribers i know we're not the biggest in the world we understand that but to, to the scale of how we operate we're in so many different things we don't just do youtube i mean michael spearheads the entire publication uh, news publication team, which re re revolves around sending people to uh, conventions, uh, you know, reporters, uh, getting, you know, the scoops and, and business arrangements. And that's like the biggest thing that we do. We also do our own store. We do our app store. We do back end uh, hosting for certain things. We, we have we have an audiobook reader. There's a lot of divisions to our company. And uh, we did for a brief period, put someone on YouTube comments. But we felt that that was kind of silly because it was all like, thanks for your comment. Thanks for your comment. It's like, that's not constructive because you either want to hear from us or like not hear from some robotic reply. So that wasn't constructive and that's not what you guys wanted to hear. So unfortunately it's just the point is we've gotten a little bit bigger than we used to be. And we, we don't have the capacity to go through tens of thousands of comments uh, and say, you know, a full blown sentence for each one. But that's why we do give back. Like you notice Cornelius is that we do constant, uh, contests. We have a contest that just ended yesterday and we are putting up a contest after this video tonight. And, uh, we do these live shows every week. That's the best we can possibly do to get back to everyone on a big scale. What do you think? Yeah. Mike? So 
like if you guys are watching this and you know you you want to answer questions we are accepting moderators so for the types of people that have been like on our channel for like five years plus and you know comment all the time and you know reply to other replies and stuff like that who are watching this show you know our most loyal viewers like if you want to uh be a moderator like for goody reader that's cool you know we're accepting like moderator positions so uh you can dm uh like our youtube channel um in in live chat send us a message send mm -hmm. us an email um you can send it to michael at goodyreader.com or to peter at goodyreader.com uh if you want to like apply for the moderator position we're sort of just accepting people that like have been that know what we're all about and have been following our channel for years because we don't just want like yahoos that's the biggest thing is that like i said with mike we we talked about and we put someone on comments we're like do some comments and they're like cool thanks good job and then no one likes that so yeah uh, michael is he, he hit the nail on the head when we do these moderator positions from now on we look for people that know the industry so that if someone says you know uh how much what's the milliamp of the latest e-reader the guy who's commenting from our company doesn't say what's a milliamp you know that's not that's not constructive it has to be like oh the latest one is big it's big enough for two months charge etc so yeah we're looking for basically quality people so yeah i mean yeah. milliamp is like a little niche but it's like well, just I mean, to answer I know general uses. questions, like, you know, we don't, like, for me, I, I do respond to some YouTube comments, especially, like, when we just upload a video for, like, the first time, and there's only, like, 10 comments, and most of them are just, like, first, second, third, you know, uh, if people ask, a, like, a, an interesting question, I'll answer it, but, like, you know, for videos that literally have thousands of comments, it's, we can't. We don't. There's no don't way. Have the, we, we, don't we can't. Have... No, we can't spend three hours each doing like just burning through comments, and then we're finally like, okay, we're all done, and then we refresh, and there's like 30 more comments. We just we can't do that. There's no way. Yeah, that's yeah. why we do this live show so that's we can right. answer your questions like live on the air, which is like a little bit easier. One of these days, we'll do a video where like, you know, because like a lot of YouTube comments are are pretty negative to like me or Peter or oh, yeah, like you know. Because uh, we're the faces of like the company, right? So people just know, know us. Like a lot of other writers are sort of like behind the scenes. You know, they they write faceless for the blog. operations. Yeah, or, or like you know they're they're you know they're staff members that only do certain things with like the business. So it's like they're not like the faces of the company like ours. You know, yeah. so um, it's we're going to just blanket a faceless company like a lot of these Chinese brands and say, oh, they're slow at releasing stuff. They're, they have low production. That's it. And that's where it ends. But when we come out like this, it's like, oh, Peter's stupid. He doesn't know anything about uh, reviewing things. Like, oh, Mike, look at this fool over here. He doesn't know crap about writing. So He's it's wearing like, a pink shirt. What a yeah, always pink. wearing a pink shirt. Great. Oh, baby blue shirt. Who real good, real good guy. So it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, when you come out as as like faces of the company, you 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 become a target. You know, we get negativity constantly, guys, like constantly. Which is why we love these shows. That you know, uh, during the vod, we only get twenty to eighty people. But uh, during the live, sorry, twenty to eighty people join up. But you know, a couple thousand watch after the fact, watch our other coverage, and uh, everyone's you know working in synergy in the e-reader community, and that's what we want to build, and that's what we we've, we've built. We feel so, yeah. Um, we should someone... do a video sometime where, like, we read like mean uh, comments mm. about ourselves, like that. Uh, uh, celebrities read mean tweets or whatever, right? And, yeah, except uh, we're yeah. sort of like not even celebrities. We're like not Z list. We're like not Z listers. Although you uh, got invited to like a last minute, I think it was the Kobo event or whatever, and they flew you out to TO Toronto and they uh, put you up in a limo in a hotel and invited you to a private uh, thing, didn't they? Yeah, and yeah. then a few years later, it's like they had sort of their last media event where like they flew everyone to like New York and uh, yeah. put people in hotels and stuff like that. So that, yeah. that, that was more of like a bigger media event because like they announced e-readers and tablets and all that yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. I think when I went, that was like the launch of the Kobo mini and like, you know, they released like the Kobo mini, I think like the Kobo touch, uh, the Kobo arc, you know, uh, oh, the wow, arc you really seven. Remember that. yeah. So it was just because like, I was actually there for like a product launch. So I got like hands, you know, hands on with the devices before they were even announced, like yeah. interviews with like executives and stuff. So 
Yeah. That was cool. And I remember that same day I took two of the guys down to um, Santa Clara, California. Um, and uh, we went to the Amazon event and um, uh, they were releasing uh, the Kindle Voyage, I think, at that point. It yeah. wasn't the Oasis, but it was later than the Touch. Yeah, they, re they released the Voyage. And uh, I remember we got there and uh, the guys were on like camera and we got like stuff on camera. And then those guys were doing that and they were just like, all right. Oh, cool. And then I went over to the food spread. They had this like 180 table of like nothing but like little tortilla rolls and macarons and stuff. So I was just chomping away and the guys were like, oh, what else do you want me to film? I'm like, mm -hmm, blah, 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 blah. and uh, yeah, that was that was the best day. And uh, yeah, they didn't put us up in a hotel because it was uh, a very public event, whereas you in Toronto got your VIP treatment. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, somebody said, uh, Queen Cats, thank you for joining again, says, why aren't you guys on Instagram? Mike? Instagram's for suckers. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I and just... And millennials. I don't want... Uh, there, there's all these young people that say, oh, Facebook's for old people. Now let me become an influencer. And it's like, the, you do your thing. That's totally cool. I mean, you want to do that. That's great. Uh, I don't have time for like another social media platform. I barely use Facebook. I think I upload like 10 pictures a year. Um, another Same wise, here. I, I just yeah. post memes. Right? Yeah, you post memes. You were like, um, uh, what you, you posted this ripoff of Oreo cookies and you're like, Oreo, what's that? Give me some creamy centers or whatever. That They're was called funny. cream clans. Cream clans. <laughs> and like, it's like, you know, I was mm. drinking Dr. Pepper and yeah. someone said, like, I saw a picture like with Dr. Bob established like 1830. I'm like, this is older than Dr. Pepper. It is like yeah. the same formula, but it's called Dr. Bob. Like what a ripoff. So yeah, I'm just like, I post memes like on my own Facebook, but like, yeah, I think we have an Instagram and like a Pinterest, but like we never use it. Just people tag us and stuff. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm too busy with like writing for Goody Reader, like to, you know, I, I post like our articles to like Facebook and Twitter and like LinkedIn, sometimes Hackers News, sometimes Reddit. But beyond that, like Instagram's for pictures. So it's it's yeah. like. We're not look at like my a, look at my plate of food at this high end restaurant like that. That's that's great. I can't afford that, so I'm just gonna stay on Facebook and upload pictures of cars. So that's just <laughs> that's my approach. Yeah, it's like we're not like a, a an image heavy yeah. company. We're like either like a like a multimedia like videos for YouTube, or we're like the written form for like the website. That's right. We're we're yeah. not like a like an image heavy like we don't like do infographs. We don't do like memes on e-readers or anything like that so instagram and like pinterest and 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 stuff like that it's not really it doesn't really have anything to do with like what we do unfortunately so yeah I, we don't, I don't snapchat like you know e-reader memes to each other and stuff this yeah we don't, do we don't have snapchat for the company like we don't do any of the the video you know the audio or the and uh, and we strictly just use linkedin and uh uh all those kind of business related ones just to talk to other heads of other companies and then like that that's it so like uh we're very limited in our social media for good measure because yeah we, we don't need to focus so much on instagram while people are just like you know swiping so quickly through their feeds and it's just it's not something we do and you know a lot of the stuff that you a lot of the people on instagram see things on facebook sometimes anyways they get like cross posts and stuff so uh we don't need to you know uh dedicate so many resources specifically to that so it's just a little bit easier there yeah like i i there was a time where i used instagram for a while but like mm -hmm. a lot of my friends would cross post the same pictures that they would on facebook to instagram so instagram was kind of like it i don't know it just be for an interest for me it, it was it wasn't like a place with like original content from my friends right. it was more like they would just post the same content on like multiple platforms so my platform is just like facebook because it was just like i went there after That's like right. myspace and friendster so that was just like the the, the, the myspace site. yeah man <laughs> <laughs> I still have a, like a MySpace. Like I still they're, they're have. They're still they're still alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. And I I still have a tripod web hosting account. Nice. I still have my uh, MSN login. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, technically I do because I still have Hotmail. So yeah, I still have my Hotmail from like 1998. Yeah. Uh, I won't tell any of you guys what that is. You have one too. You got an old Yahoo or something. You have like a uh, when you yeah. were developing games. Uh, yeah. Little, Mike was into game development. Yeah, I was like, I guess, 
in a video game industry before I started Goody Reader, like uh, I was in the games industry for like five years, just making like Nintendo DS titles, uh, stuff for like the Wii, you know, sort of mobile games and stuff like that. Nothing that really like sold or anything. They were all kind of crappy titles. Uh, but I got paid and like, you know, it got me experience and stuff like that. Just yeah. sort of like working in it, like a sort of a boutique kind of studio. I think there was like 200 people there, like a lot of people from like EA and like Rockstore North and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like Relic and, you know, a lot of the, you know, at that time, th this was like 20 years ago now. So, you know, that that's when I was working in the game industry, I guess when the Wii just came out. So I guess that was like a while ago, but yeah, it was fun. Cause like, you know, I went to art school and stuff and I uh, learned how to make like pixel art and stuff like that. Like pixel, you know uh, yeah. I really like sprite art and like 2d pixel art. And like, that was sort of at the time where like, no one was really doing that with games. People were like doing yeah. like asphalt and, you know, these sort of high end triple A titles for like games. And then over time, like you started noticing like more sprite, more pixel artists, like making games, like especially like these idle games and this and that. Dude, like, they still make like mainstream releases of games that revolve around like old school graphics, like Octopath Traveler is a, a series of games that are released even up till now 2020 on the switch and stuff like that they use uh almost like chrono trigger sprites from 1995 but they use it in like a, a, a several layered environment so you have like dust and clouds in the background and then you have like leaves and stuff blowing around in the foreground so it crosses the barrier it it, it pushes them both together like modern 3d graphics with like old school pixel art obviously to a greater density so it doesn't look like 8-bit mario's running around but uh yeah it's it's uh, definitely something that is still used today uh, idle games cell phone games tons of them use pixel art yeah like you know i think for the background stuff it was like parallax mapping that was like the type of stuff where like uh you would have like with the backdrop so like you would have like stars behind you and the stars would like move or the sun would move like right. as you were moving or there would be like you know like castlevania in the background there'd be like gears oh, moving on the clocks and stuff so that yeah. was like parallax mapping or uh, on the back end i forget what the front end with stuff was called uh, I, I don't want to say layers there there was like another technical name for it but i did more of like the background stuff because i i just liked it because like you would yeah. just put shaders over it and it, you know just to add like the depth of field to like yeah this was a background um certain type of days you know yeah. interior exterior shots and stuff like that so uh lighting things like that is it torch lit is it like a sunny day is it dark you is can see he knows mode? what he's talking yeah. about he actually made a, a game that was you made an mmo it was available online you had like thousands of people actually playing it too yeah it was kind of like a, a crappy game uh your, your protagonist was like a cat and um so you would just like uh <laughs> people would always make fun of you because of like the way that like you looked uh but it was like you could pick different like classes and stuff i think i had like 32 different classes nice. and when you wore equipment it would like change like the your avatar and stuff i eventually added like other things but the cat was like my favorite because like there was uh one one kind of thing i i did where uh, a, there was like a curse made on like a king and he got turned into like a really fat cat. And so he had like, uh, I guess his like queen got turned into a cat too. So all of like the royals were like all like various degrees of like old, like little kittens yeah. and stuff. And like, as you were like lifting the curse, the cat, all the kittens like did, did this big dance number. And there was like all this like kind of happy music in the background. And it was called the Pretty Kitty Shuffle. And like they would do like a, like a like a two minute like dance and stuff. And you could like interact with them and stuff. It was awesome. Well, it's good that you had your priorities straight. Uh, yeah, someone is asking James Michael, 7.8 is too bad for technical PDFs. Uh, James Michael with a 7.8 inch screen you cannot fit a traditional size piece of paper on it. So if you think of your technical document, your medical document, whatever the case may be, it is going to be scaled down. So it's gonna be scaled down 
and it's going to be compressed to fit on your 7.8 inch screen. You'll still see it. It's not going to be all cut off. But in terms of getting the finer detail, there is truly only one screen size that will fit 8.5 by 11 US letter, and that is 13.3. 10.3s get really, really close, 90% of the way there, but they do not fit a page of A4 or 8.5 by 11. 10.3 is A5, so it's smaller. Again, you can read PDFs on a Kindle if you want. We all do it on our phones, of course, but it won't fit properly. So if you're going to ask yes or no, is it bad for technical PDFs? It's not bad, but it's not ideal. No, I would buy something bigger. Yeah, honestly, like a PDF is like if you were to print it like one a one page PDF out, like say yeah. like an eighty page PDF out, each page would be on one page. That's and right. like it would have the line spacing and the margins preserved and things like that. Um, yeah, like on a seven point eight, that's almost like too small. You're you're gonna have to pinch and zoom like a lot. Um, a lot. And a lot of the times with like the, the PDF rendering engines that come stock with these companies is you find the sweet spot of like pinching and zooming. But once you turn a page, you have to like repinch and zoom. It doesn't like remember the, um, you know, whatever state that you put the previous page in. So think about doing that like 50 times as you're scrolling through a document, it becomes like a little bit unwieldy. So if you're looking for something for technical documents uh, and an e-ink screen, yeah, 10.3 minimum, 13.3 ideal, but it comes to like the cost ratio, like 13.3s are like 800 bucks, 10.3s, you know, as little as like three, sometimes like as high as like five. Yeah. So, you know, you, and you know, that that's what you're gonna get. So 10.3 minimum, but if you are going to be exclusively reading like technical documents and signing them and underline them and annotations and all that <laughs> type of stuff, yeah, 13.3, bite the bullet and just pay the price. That brings us to another question. Someone right here, do, 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 do. Abdullah asks, why is every good e-note four or five hundred dollars? Exactly what Mike said. You just got to spend the money to get it. And Mike mentioned this earlier and I, and I touched on it. E-ink devices are not Kindles. So when you buy your Note Air or your Note 3, don't think you're like, oh man, I'm spending $500 for a Kindle. Oh man, I should buy an iPad. No, no, no. This thing, again, OctaCore has plentiful amount of RAM. It's very fast. Sometimes you have 64, if not 128 gigs of storage. EMR, Wacom layer, capacitive. You can watch videos. You could load in Amazon, you can load in Kobo, you can load in your email on these. They're not e-ink devices, they're not underachieving devices. Production costs are expensive, and if you look at all the specs, get away from the e-ink screen and just look at the specs, you'll see that it's on par, if not better, than a lot of other tablets that are running Android on the market. So your dollars are going somewhere. You're not, it's not like they build these for 29 bucks and sell them for 500. No, no, the e-ink screens are actually particularly expensive. Yeah, it's it's because of like the scale of manufacturing. Uh, they just don't like, you know, manufacture a million e-ink screens yeah. like they would like an LCD for like an iPhone where right. like, they're making like tens of millions of screens. And it's way cheaper because of that. You know, the e-ink is just inherently expensive. Um, you know, when it just comes for like a six inch e-reader. Sure, you're paying like 50 bucks, you know, yep. no problem. It. But it, it's all a matter of like, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a note taking device? Wacom screen that added like, you know, DECA core, octa core processor that adds the cost. Uh, micro USB versus USB C that adds to the yep. cost. You know, onboard the RAM. speakers with yeah. onboard audio uh, chips uh, that, that adds to the cost. Uh, um, uh, gyroscopes, accelerometers, GPS antennas, Wi Fi antennas, Bluetooth antennas. These are all things that companies have to buy to put on their circuit board the PCB to put into the shell. It's not like everything magically comes with every possible fully loaded thing. It's like you're buying the equivalent of a high end car versus like a low end commuter because you know, the low end commuter won't have the Bluetooth sensor, won't have the GPS sensor for Google maps. You know what I mean? So it won't have like CarPlay or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that are on these devices. And like we said, 2020 has showed us anything. It showed us that e-ink devices can now be considered smartphones with an e-ink screen, tablets with an e-ink screen, computer monitors 
with an e-ink screen. And that brings us to another question that someone just asked. The broccoli industry says, I think an e-ink screen that plays videos will be revolutionary. I'm glad you mentioned that broccoli because there are a ton of manufacturers that play videos on their devices. Onyx, Boyu, Hisense, uh, even companies lesser known like EE Wright Whiskey, uh, Siswu R9, Dasung, all of these guys will play videos. In fact, a good Onyx device, say a Nova, a Nova 3 with a 7.8 h screen on X mode, you play videos all day long. Just boom, play them. Uh, it, there's, there's, we've seen... Uh, videos come out a year and a bit ago with the Siswu. We were like, wow, this is quick refresh. Now it's a little bit less of a revelation that they can play videos because a lot of manufacturers actually can. So dive in a little bit on our YouTube channel and check that out because yeah, videos are, are here. Yeah, just to kind of give you a rundown of what they're doing. They're not just because like you're buying like a deck of core processor with like eight gigs of RAM on an e device. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be watching videos on it. Yeah. Um, watching videos and all that type of stuff uh, have to do with like the, the subtle things that these companies are doing with the refresh rate uh, right. on a software level. <clears throat> so like Onyx has like four, uh, uh, Hisense has two different re refresh modes. Same with like a, a Voyu and stuff. Onyx is sort of like the outliner where they offer four. Most of them offer like a standard like e-reading experience and then a2 mode which sort of like gives you uh a little bit of degradation on like the the ppi and yeah. gives you more of like an increased on like performance so having a2 mode you could run an android app and like if you turn a page it won't be like a judder like you know like it normally would it would be like a seamless transition uh with onyx they've gone a step above a2 mode where they have like two different ones but speed they're, they're and then x mode yeah yeah so speed and x mode they both have their use cases so speed mode is amazing basically for like seamless web browsing yeah uh using apps that have animations specially animated page turns games uh x mode is primarily like geared towards like playing higher end games that's right uh, but also watching youtube videos that's um right. because they don't have like the syncing refresh problem so if you know it's not like the type of thing where like it's seamless if you're watching at like 300p or like 360p or like 720 you'll be okay but don't put it up like you know 1080 or like 4k no, or no. something like you, that you don't need to no yeah it's it's just because like you watching a video on an ea no matter what type of software trickery they're doing will not never match it like working on a monitor a chromebook a, no. you know your cell phone your smartphone uh whatever you're using in your life you know uh you're never going to yeah. get that <clears throat> seamless transition on e-ink i don't believe like ever it's just it's not what e-ink is no. about e -ink it is isn't. about e-ink's about like a replacement for paper it, all these things that they've been doing over the years all these little added bonuses and stuff they're just bells and whistles that that's all they are a stale image on an e-ink device is not moving but the pixels are in a stasis mode a stale image on a phone even if it's just a picture it is constantly flickering on the screen you're watching us right now on your tv on your smartphone on your computer screen they're flickering uh, anywhere from 29.97 to 120 times per second you just don't notice it your eyes can't pick up but what yeah. that means is that these screens are ready for motion if you do a swipe it, it's already ready it's oh, i'm flickering i'm flickering e-ink needs to be activated so right now it's like, oh, I'm just lounging around. Oh, I've done something. And then they move. They're not ready for you. They're not flickering constantly. X mode gets you close, but it's never going to be like a phone, uh, an actual phone. And that's fine. Cause like Mike said, it's not, but it's about. Yeah. On the state, on like that stale image mode that Peter was showing you. Yeah. Ink doesn't draw power. It no. only draws power if a state changes. So if then positive and negative e ink particles detect a change, then it draws power That's right. but if it's just like showing stuff they're just like floating there like in like the like in little e ink capsule yeah um we have a question here and i told him we'd answer this do y'all predict a c an explosion of e-readers slash note takers in 2021 as more schools go online and people demand more technology to keep up with it um i will answer that really quick because 2020 this year we have seen 
more of our we, we've gotten into warehouse operations as well which we do bulk wholesale in 2018 we started this started off all right 2020 we have supplied more countries and companies with wholesale than we ever had um without getting into too much um uh, specifics, but we had an order of 45 Sony DPT RP1s that we shipped down to a tech lab in uh, Texas. We had a huge order that was going out to Israel for some notes. We had, um, you know, a, a pack of boys, maybe 20, 25, maybe 30 boys that we sent to South Africa. So yeah, there are, and this is all to do with exactly what we're doing is online communication, online teaching, online meetings because of the climate. So yeah, um, 2021 is just going to bring more of that if anything. Yeah, I mean, until we're, we have a full vaccine, which I think for everyone to be like immune, like to have the shots, especially because mm. they're two different shots. And right now, like in Canada, like, you know, they, they announced that it has entered the country. They spent X millions of dollars on it yeah. or billions on it. But it's like, yeah. you know, where do I go to get the shot? You know, who's going to give yeah. it to me? Everyone no, priority knows. first. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's the same like in the U.S., like it's basically like a, on a state by state, you know, that are, that has like their own way of they're doing things. And then, you know, city by city, like no one really knows how this is going to work out once it gets to like the everyday man, you know, like the, <laughs> everyday working man. Well, cause they're doing hospitals first, like the frontline staff. Uh, they're doing like old folks homes next because those are the, which is you know, perfect, compromised yeah. immune systems, yeah. you know, just as you get older, you're more susceptible to like things. Right. right. And then, you know, risk categories. So as asthmatics, like people who have like type one or type two diabetes, like, you know, people who are in the higher risk categories, they'll get it. But it's like, you know, I know I'm in Canada, Peter, you're in Japan. We probably have not heard about any way that they're actually going to be like rolling this out. No, even over here in Japan, they said that their uh, February or end of January is the first run of vaccines. But no, it's not going to come down to the guy sitting behind a desk. It's going to go to healthcare workers, people over 70 or anyone that has like a proven uh, respiratory problem, uh, asthma, stuff like that. They get that first because, yeah, I mean, I'm not invincible, but I am in fine health and I don't believe I have asthma or anything like that. So, um, you know, kind of. I'll be last and that's fine. Cause I'd rather get, I'd rather um, people who need it, get it. Uh, we just put on Facebook. We put a little post while we were doing this 10 minutes ago saying we were going to give away a smartphone e-ink for free right now. And we are, but it's free it's $0. You don't have to pay, but there's a catch. We don't know what it is. And this is honestly true. This was one we showed you guys last week. Company sent this to us in a box that literally said like something like Shenzhen Guangzhou Inc. So basically just two regions and cities Inc. of China. I don't know what this is. I've used my phone on it to uh, um, uh, translate it. I could read some of it. It says East River or something. Basically says East Cube Pocket Reading. And then on the back, it says Birdmouth. And it is an e-ink smartphone. And it base, bases itself off of a QQ um, uh, ecosystem in China. It's a QQ. It's kind of cool. It opens up like this little cascading accordion of a book. It's kind of nice. And uh, yeah, a company sent this to us absolutely for free. It was in an unknown box with no documentation, no email, no uh, greetings letter that usually says, hey, guys, here's the promotional information. Let us know what you think. Nothing. You get a one uh, 10,000 Chinese yuan or renminbi gift card from QQ. It is not uh, opened yet. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, e-ink smartphone. It's completely in Chinese. That looks huge. Uh, it's fairly big, actually. Here, yeah, let's let's crack it open. Um, it, it just QQ documentation through and through. There's all the, uh, the, the user manuals in this box. It looks like a nice box, seriously. So here is an Asus Zenfone 5Z 2018, 2019 phone. It's uh, it's pretty big. It's about the same size, and it's all wrapped up, factory sealed. Uh, we we tried operating it through the plastic when we first got in. We're like, you can't get into this without a login. So if you guys want this phone, <laughs> you have to beg and grovel at our feet for us to give this to you. No, I'm just kidding. We'll do the same thing we did with the X Pen last week. Tell us why you want this phone, and maybe a little bit of a blurb of what you think this is. And we will send it to you absolutely for free 
after this video ends, we'll gather all the uh, entries, if there are any, and send it to you for free. So stay tuned for that. Take this phone and like it. It's basically like we can't even do a giveaway for it. So we're trying to just like throw it at you guys. We cannot do a giveaway video for this. So there's just, there's no way. And there's no way uh, we're going to sell like a phone no, that we know dude, nothing no. about. Like, you know what I mean? So when we this get is the things, perfect way to like give back. It is. And when we get things, there's a letter in there. There's like a folder with like a, a, a press package that says, you know, hey, folks at Goody Reader, this is like Fujitsu Incorporated. Uh, these are the talking points. These are like the, the press images. There's like an SD card with like press images and stuff. Send it over to Michael's team and he creates the imagery. Or at least like here's like an alley something. Like Baba listing or something. something. Yeah, for like Banggood. Dude, this was actually in a box with like nothing in it, just bubble wrapped. And uh, yeah, it's like, I, I don't know what it is. And even if I translate it, it's just saying things. Bird mouth, East Q pocket reading. It's like, that's great. But I don't know what you want me to talk about. So anyways, uh, <laughs> someone, yeah, everyone's kind of, ooh, new device. I wish the person who wins it luck. Like, if you guys want it, seriously, just say like, I want this. Uh, we'll put you on, we'll announce the winner on Facebook. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's keep it going here. That's funny. Mystery phone. Yeah. Uh, Michael, do you think Apple will ever be concerned about eye strain and the appeal of e-ink? You're the Apple guy. You talk about it. No, man. A Apple's just like doing their thing. I think the next yeah. thing that they're going to do is like, <laughs> what is it? Like micro LED or something like that. Um, I they, They're going to do it like on the new iPad Pro, uh, but I don't know exactly what they're going to do. Uh, yeah, I think it's like mini LEDs, uh, just sort of like a new form of it. But yeah, like Apple's just sort of like set in their ways. Like you don't know how much money that they actually make on a quarterly basis by just like selling iPhones, iPads, iWatches, you know, all the accessories, like, you know, those like $52, like USB-C charging things like oh, they, they make billions and then they make like whatever like 15 to like 35 percent on all app in app transactions so it's like what why would they ever want to do anything different you know what i mean it's like at least uh, you know amazon's doing stuff with e-ink like a lot of other companies are but like you know even lenovo's like doing some e-ink type of stuff like you know they, they see a future in it it's just they don't know what the future is going to be yet that's so, right yeah Apple will never do it. Like they haven't even ported over iBooks to like Android yet. Well, you know, they have Apple Music on Android. They got like, you know, some other services and stuff, but you don't really have iBooks on Android, which would be like the natural step to play. But I guess that's one of the benefits of being like on the Apple ecosystem where like you have Apple News, you have like Apple Health, you have like Apple Music, you have iBooks. And that's the, a lot of that stuff just doesn't exist on like, windows apps or like other platforms and stuff like that so you know they they just you know they're going to innovate with like different ways to like make the screens more vibrant up the refresh rate from like whatever 60 hertz to like 120 hertz that's sort of like the next step because fluid transitions between scrolling you know if you put two phones side by side one's like at 120 hertz and another one is like at 60 hertz and you flip the screens the 120 hertz will be way like the transition will be awesomer you know everything will just be more fluid so that's probably the two next step is like mini led and like um uh increasing the refresh rate <clears throat> on our higher end products but yeah apple will never embrace e-ink ever never <laughs> never <laughs> never yeah no i uh i agree um apple is uh more it's like amazon they're a reactionary company rather than an innovative company for example a lot of people think they innovate all these things but if you look side by side of all apple phones and all like other android phones and other phones that run operating systems other phones are always doing things bigger better larger faster you know 
it's always higher spec, higher value. Apple phones always work though. And they, they very rarely like, you know, shut down and die and they're always supported. So there's a ton of advantages of going with Apple, but when it comes to it, it's mostly like Amazon. Yeah. They sit back and they're like, Oh, they did that. Okay. We're going to do it. Cause we know it works, but we're going to do it better. And they do just like Amazon. Amazon didn't do glow light first. They didn't do audio first. They didn't even make an e-reader first. There was e-readers for like years before Amazon got into it. But they sat back and said, ah, oh, e-readers, here's a Kindle. Yay, trillion dollar company. Not because of just the Kindle, but you know what I mean. It's like that. Uh, Michael, when can we expect a 10.3 inch color note-taking e-reader device, says James Michael. Michael to Michael. Uh, at least by the summer of this year, or no, yeah. 2021. Yeah, uh, like we, before the yeah. summer, you'll see, you'll see stuff. Uh, me and the team in Japan went to, uh, we talked about this last week, went to a uh, event called Connected Inc. 2019. That was in Tokyo, Japan. I personally had the guy filming over my shoulder while I was drawing on the screen. It is real. Uh, we don't know anything right now because like Mike said, if anything, it's going to be summertime, but it does work. You click red and you write in red. You click blue, you write in blue. It's all seamless. It's all very quick. Think of a note-taking device like the Note 3, the Note Air now, the Remarkable, but it's just going to be in color. And all color is, is a filter array that goes over the device so that when your eyes pass through it, ends up being in color. So it's not like they have to make this space age alien technology and wait for like components and materials from the moon you know moon dust to be able to make this no it's it's all here and ready to go it's just that getting it in line with production promotion labor it's just there's so many aspects to getting it out but 2021 is going to be when we'll see it uh james michael again actually he's very vocal perfect says can we sideload apks into uh the supernote a6x no supernote is using Chauvet or Chavot or something. It's a uh, branch of Android, but it's not really Android. I'm yeah, it's talk. think about it as yeah. like a launcher where they lock specific things out and they, you know, it, yeah, it's basically like a custom like launcher, but you can't change the launcher. So it's like they've, they've locked out a lot of like the Android development like type things. Yeah, you can't sideload stuff. Like, for example, uh, <clears throat> Supernote said, we're going to release uh, the Amazon Kindle. And they did. They uh, On the sidebar, there's an app that says Kindle. You can't control that. You can't uninstall that. You can't do anything with that. It's completely up to them and how they develop for their own system. So you, you can't take the reins and sideload in APKs. It, there's no installing package. There's no package installer. Nothing will work on that. So... Uh, yes, to answer a lot of people's questions, is the phone in any other language when you boot it up? I'm actually charging it off camera here because um, I wasn't able to get back past the QQ um, uh, login section. So I'll charge it up for a little bit while we chat and then uh, I'll see if, uh, if that's uh, something that's going to work there. Someone said, uh, Joseph Kamhi, I remember him from a couple uh, weeks ago. Are there any plans for a 13.3 inch color? e-ink and will the new color screens be whiter than the current ones well they won't be whiter the gray scale will be more pronounced so if you like look at an e-reader without a front light on it's usually like awesome like resolution on like the black text so like font clarity and the background typically isn't white it's gray but it's more like a solid version of gray with the first generation of color, the color filter array would actually change the background. So instead of gray, it would be like different gradients of gray. Uh, but it, it, you wouldn't really notice it unless you were looking for it. And But it was more pronounced uh, like with the front light. So with the first generation of color e-ink, you needed the front light basically on in order to see colors really pronounced. Because of the color filter array and the way that it was constructed with the first generation, you didn't really see like very excellent image quality. It was normally like at 100 PPI uh, for anything to do with colors, so, like PDFs and stuff like that. Whereas with black and white text, it was like at 300 PPI, which is the text, but the background would like play havoc. So E-Ink is fixing all of this with like Kalido 2. Now I haven't actually seen any of these devices. I've only seen tech specs and, and things that they approved upon, but there's no commercially available product yet until like at least February. So that's when we'll be able to actually demonstrate 
two devices side by side, one with first generation, yeah. one with second generation, <clears throat> both a phone and an e-reader. So we'll be able to actually show you like them side by side in addition to just like an unboxing and review, but can comparisons and stuff. But, you know, I'm interested to know how, how what Ian has managed to do, you know, just sort of PR spin and spec sheets yeah. aside. Will this be a dramatic quality of life improvement? Will they display more colors? Will it be at a higher resolution? You know, these are all just remains to be seen. We don't really know. There's a lot of weird things with color e-ink. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the reason we couldn't do a uh, comparison between true first generation color e-ink Triton and the recent one is because it was separated by like a seven year gap. And all the ones we tried to get our hands on, we talked to our distributors, Jetbook, they're basically dead. They just make translators now and sell for other people. Pocketbook doesn't have the color Lux anymore because it was basically created in 2012, 2013. We're, we have a business partnership with Fujitsu now because of the Quaderno, but the Fujitsu color came out 11 years ago and they're like, no, nah, we don't have that. So we even tried to get these color devices to like put them up against Kaleido, Kaleido, and we, we actually couldn't. So um, those old color devices are basically just uh, all dead and buried. And this new line of color will be very much uh, consumer available. And we will show, like Mike said, comparisons, outdoor tests, give you guys an idea of what's going on. A lot of people said that the color filter array which is basically, like we said, this color filter that goes on top of the device, that it's passive. It's not powered by anything. So no matter what, dark or light, uh, you know, white or, white or orange or yellow or whatever other shade, you're always going to see color. But with Onyx, you turn on X mode, and for some reason, there's no more color at all on X mode. So it's very interesting that maybe they powered it. Maybe it is active. Maybe they have a software controller uh, with a little tiny cable that, that turns it off. We will see this on the later generation and see if that's gonna be something of the norm. We don't know. Yeah, I, from what everything that I heard from E-Ink and, and, and their partners was that there was no way to turn the color filter array off. Yeah, like right. there, there was just, it was, it was always on. But Onyx basically proved that you can turn it off with software. So, yeah. you know, so obviously it is whatever working. trick, whatever trickery they did, like they, they didn't, they didn't explain it on a technical level, like, because I guess it's like trade secret. Right. So, right. Um, you know, I think that they did it just completely by accident because they never, <laughs> they so they're like, Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, no, I, I just think they never noticed it because like we we actually found it we actually found it during our test uh before anyone else and uh and then i think when we told your team like you guys broke the story and it's like no one else was reporting on the fact that you could turn the color off yeah it's just i i just think that like it fell through q a and it was just like it was a happy accident so yeah um you know, it just proves that with software, you can turn the color filter array off. So it is and possible now. Someone said uh, maybe the color part just can't keep up with the refresh rate of X mode, question mark. Well, that's the thing. You don't need to be watching a video. You could turn on X mode, look at a color manga on a stale image, not do anything, and it's black and white. So it's it's like yeah it's just it doesn't just mean it's it's only black and white on motion even on stale imagery pdfs the color turns off which is very uh very interesting somebody uh, said yeah. why is like your apartment bare uh, oh yeah you, you uh, i noticed that too yeah that's right you uh you're moving soon aren't you yeah you, you kind of see that there's no paintings on the walls behind me yeah there's like no books on the bookshelves there's like my living room is like the only thing like other than the books that has been packed up like and like food stuff in like the fridge but almost everything else is uh yeah i'm moving but i don't know where and i don't know when uh it's probably somewhat soon uh, but I'm like, you know, there's been past moves where like, I've literally been scrambling three days before, like I had to move by packing everything and doing yeah. it just under the gun is just horrible. So I'm just like packing stuff up that like I, I could live without, you know, like, I don't know, just stuff, right? Yeah. Just things. So, that you accumulate. Someone said, someone said the books are gone. Yeah, they're not gone. They're just like packed up. So yeah, um, no, he I, didn't do a he didn't do like an outside 
book burning and you know <laughs> yeah, i remember that from the simpson no family guy that was hilarious no uh, we don't do book burnings anymore but uh yeah someone said moving on up mike or moving on up exclamation um, mark yeah so th th there's like a few possibilities like i'm sort of on like the fence like whether i want to rent like a house like just all to myself like and sort of because right now i live in like a like a two-bedroom condo and you know the, the the drawbacks of cohabitating a space no matter what type of concrete you have above above you you know i don't hear neighbors and stuff i have but you know if i i can't really watch movies at like full volume i can't like yeah. listen to music at like midnight loud because like i'll just get noise complaints and stuff and, yeah you know i've i've been living in apartments and condos like for like the last 20 years uh so i'm kind of at that point where it's like i kind of want to rent a house uh just yeah. like to have all the space for like you know my office here my youtube studio my photography studio for product reviews like yeah. my second workstation slash server room because like i have like a nas setup and stuff uh so i can have like a, a nasa setup nas so yeah. i have like a plex server with like six hard drives uh, that I use for like, just like media sharing across like my home network and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing something like that, but there was like, I guess in Vancouver, there's always like these new, like high rise, like apartment buildings. Uh, so I've been like looking at, I, I took a look at one, it's like on like the very top floor, like the 42nd floor. And I was kind of scared of heights. That's so I'd, I'd never be able to go out on my balcony because I would just get like vertigo and stuff. But you get like the perfect view of like the ocean and the mountains, like, you know, the mist like above the mountains and stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's like a newer apartment. So it's like, you know, so everything's, I can unlock my apartment with like my smartphone and stuff. Uh, it has like a Nest system installed and things like that. Amazon lockers downstairs. So if I can't like find like a good house that's like in my price range, which most of them I've been looking at are, but they're like farther away from like the beach than I'm living now. So it's like a trade off. Like, do I want a, like a house farther away in like a total quiet residential neighborhood, which sounds good, uh, but or do I want like something more, you know, another apartment building, but like a right. modern one that's like all built to be soundproof and stuff. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, that's the pro that therein lies the issue. Yeah. Um, George Lemaitre says, I have two years of remarkable notes and just bought Onyx Books Air. Is it easy to bring the files over to Books Air? If you export your notes, George, you have to make sure you see what file format they are in. If they are PDF, if they're uh, TXT, if they're even an image like IMG, uh, PNG, those are supported by the books. Uh, so if you wanted, actually, what we're going to do is I'm going to send you a uh, store at goodereader.com and you can send us over an email and we uh, someone will assist you and uh, make sure that the file formats match on both sides. So, yes. Um Oh, are you searching something on this right now, Mike? Yeah, can I go so to uh, you okay, could you could from your remarkable you can uh, you can export to... so you could export documents that are annotated. So uh, yeah. notes that you've edited to PDF, PNG, right. or SVG. Now right SVG is like sort of like a lot a new sort of uh, think of it as like WebP, where it's like it's very a high image quality but like the file size is like so small so like uh, if you look at goody reader almost everything is in like webp like our logo to like all of the icons on our site are like svg and like a png of our logo used to be like 1.2 megs and F sfg logo of it is like 1.4 kilobits right so everything just like loads quicker but yeah so uh pdf or PNG, I would probably do PDF because most, um, like most companies that have like, you know, if you're switching say from Remarkable to Onyx, a PDF is a PDF. And like most of the note taking features are built on PDF. So you can just export everything on your Remarkable like uh, that you've made notes of to PDF. And then you can just like import it uh, to your, uh, Onyx. Now, one of the cool things about the Onyx 
unlike the Remarkable, is if you want to transfer documents to your Remarkable or from your Remarkable to your computer, you need the Remarkable desktop software yeah. uh, to, to facilitate that. Onyx doesn't have that. You can just like, if you have like a Windows computer, you can just like plug Anything. your Onyx in and it's like you just drag and drop with like Windows Explorer. So or it's like ridiculously just... easy. Yeah, or you can just use an app like Gmail or Outlook and just download email on your own device on your air and email yourself all your documents all day long with the remarkable you have to plug it in and sometimes you have to do a one-time passcode and if you're like us and you have another remarkable like the older one or a testing unit you can't actually use it with your computer you have to deregister that one in order to plug your new one in it's it's uh it, it's a it's a thing <laughs> so yeah that that's why a lot of people ask us what we <clears throat> excuse me what we prefer the remarkable versus the air the remarkable just you know on a on a truthful level it just can't do as much as the air it, it, and it's just as distraction free because you can make it your own and the, they're both glass based screens and you know what if you like the remarkable pen here's a tip buy the air and buy the remarkable pen because remarkable pens great just use it on the air so uh, the air just just offers so much more to a level where it's not even discreet it's just it offers so much more that it's hard to say yeah, I get the remarkable and wait seven months for it. No, buy an air and you get it next week. So it's yeah. Um, got another question here. When do you think from Abdullah? When do you think e notes will get to cheap average consumer level? Uh never. Yeah. It's uh e ink is too fringy. Um uh, and and people the vast majority uh just like use like a smartphone or tablet. And they just like, you know, use it on that. The vast majority. There's just there's such like a small minority that like know what e ink is, know what e paper is. Like could list more models than like a Kindle. You know, like when I tell people what I do, I get like a lot of blank stares. I'm like, yeah. you've heard of Kindle before? Yeah, I, I do stuff about that. You know, just like <laughs> because it, yeah. I can't explain in like two no. sentences like what does Goody Reader do? It's like, it's normally much. I say like, we, we write and talk about the disruption of traditional media that digital has brought. So eBooks, e magazines, newspapers, manga, yeah. you know, and we talk about the disruption that that's caused. It's yeah. easy, you know, because like for like our, our Goody Reader, that's like, you know, in essence, that's what we talk about. That's what e-readers are, you know, reading an e-book digitally is one less person, you know, you're, you're it's one less book purchased. It's and, and you know, that might not sound a lot, but a million people reading ebooks is like a million less books sold, which is why all these used bookstores and you know, indie bookstores have like closed like in the last like decade. It's why Barnes and Noble got bought out by like an equity firm because they just couldn't make books selling profitable anymore. Yeah. So that's that's just the state of affairs. That's right. Um, <clears throat> Ace of Base, a longtime paid member of ours, says, guys, most people are getting the Note Air or the Remarkable for noting. Is there a big difference between the writing experience to get one or the other? Ace of Base, no, there is not, which is why we tell you. And we sell everything, so we're completely unbiased. We sell everything across the board, everything from things you've never heard of to things everyone has heard of. The, the Remarkable is no longer a plastic screen like the first gen. It is a... Uh, glass screen, just like the Note Air, and they look very similar, and you can use their pens on each other. Most people are getting the Note Air, and people that have been in line for the Remarkable with us at least, supplying to countries where it's not available, they've canceled their orders or they've moved over because they're just tired of waiting for a flywheel design to reach their turn. So then they they get the uh, they get the Note Air, and they can start using it today. And if they want to use the onboard audio and Android 10 and Glowlight, which the Remarkable doesn't have, they have it. They, it, it's, it's there if you need it. You don't have to use it. You don't say, oh, dang it, I have to pay Asphalt 5 now. Brr. No, you don't have to do that. You, you can keep it as distraction-free as you'd like, or you can you know, shoot for the moon. It's, up, it's completely up to you. So uh, to answer that, most people are grabbing the air. It's just the reality of the situation. It's not, uh, even, it's not even like an either or. I mean, like, you, I don't know. It's like you're, you're constantly drumming up the air. Like, it's not... That's what uh, people are asking. Uh, the air is not yeah. the best. Like, no, you guys need all. to know that, like, 
it's just not a two horse race with E notes between the remarkable two and like the air. It's they're just like two products. Like you got to think, what do you want out of a device? And what do you want to do? Do you just want to like do to do lists? Do you want to just like sign the odd contract in PDF and like email it out to somebody? Like, you know, are you side loading in ebooks yourself? Like, it's use cases like the air and, and remarkable two are like this, you know, both glass based screens, both the same size, they're both 10.3 inches, but there's a lot of other 10.3 inches like out there that are equally more capable or offer like vastly uh, better writing experience, like a yeah. super note, a five X, a 10.3 inch modern specs. Uh, what is it like the like book? Uh, Alita, the, uh, Alita is the 10.3. Yeah. Yeah. So that is like equally as good. We you know Google play installed and stuff like that. It's actually cheap as hell. So it's like, what is it like 389 bucks? So it's like, it's a, yeah, it's it, one it, of the cheapest entries to uh note taking for sure. It's cheaper than remarkable too. It's like cheaper than like the, the like the air. Uh, so, I mean, yep. I mean, if you want to save some money, there's a lot of great alternatives like out there. Just so you guys know, like, you know, we, we talk about like sort of brand names you may have heard of before, you know, like yeah. everyone's heard of the remarkable just because they do an awesome job at like viral marketing on social media. So they, 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 they're, they're building identity for themselves, but I mean, yeah, we can all, we can make recommendations a little bit better. If you just sort of like tell us what your personal use case scenario is. What are you using and that's what form? actually what one of our, our lead-in uh, messages to our customer service uh, hotline with Facebook is that one, we get so many, and we touch on them personally, but the first lead-in automated message is tell us more about what you want. Then someone says, oh, I need A4 documents. And then I'm like, hey, this is you know John or Kelly or or Miki or Mike or Peter from Goody Reader, because we personally answer all these to keep uh, all of the customer service in-house. We don't outsource. And then we say, you know, I think a 13.3 inch, maybe the Fujitsu is good. And they're like, awesome, I'll order right away. And like that's the approach we take. So yeah, Mike's right. It, it does come down to what you guys want. And we understand the note air and the remarkable two are hot stuff right now and everyone's talking about it someone just commented and saying uh i just switched over to the note air for the glow light and android 10 so that's that's an exact example of just the battle never ends between these two right now and they're both ba basically fighting it out for top position so uh yeah it basically comes down to what you want for example right now cornelius Nawiki just asked what 10.3 inch device do you recommend for reading sheet music uh, i apologize cornelius i believe you uh, asked something earlier saying what is a budget uh music device because as you know michael music devices have come out in 2020 2019 but they're expensive the guido and the padmu are upwards of like 1300 dollars, right yeah, I mean, you got to think about sheet music is like, you know, you when you're reading sheet music, traditionally, it comes in a book. So it's like you're looking at two different pages. So no matter what you're doing, you're quickly turning the page and then right. you're, you're, you're turning one page and you have two pages. So a, a, like a sheet music reader is geared towards multiple screens. There's yeah. really no getting away about that because if you have a single screen, you're just like either switching Swiping it, like, it. you know, whenever you do it, it's better to have more than two screens because it's like a natural extension. More than one screen. Yeah, over yeah. like the, the, the physical part of it. So yeah, the Guido or that, the Guido is probably the best. It's like the gold standard. It's made it's for mu music notes, uh, 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 music musicians. I'm sorry, I couldn't yeah. think of the word. It's they made have, for musicians. Yeah. They have like a sheet music store that you can buy stuff from, like, or you can sideload in your own PDFs. And it has like a hinge technology. Yeah. So you could open, you could close it, put it in a case and like bring it with you. It, it's ridiculous. It, it is the best one on the market, but I mean, it's like almost like 2K. It's I, expensive, yeah. It's, but you know, there's another thing, Mike, that you got to think about. Compatibility. You can buy a big screen e-reader, like a used Sony, with a PDF reader and you read your music. But does it have compatibility for other things? Bluetooth for foot pedals, you know what I mean? We need to think about that kind of thing. And so far, only a couple companies, Onyx, Padmu, and Guido, have foot pedal integration. So when you're playing your instrument, you can change the sheets with your feet. Because if you're playing piano... 
and you got to reach over and swipe it. And it's like, oh, oh, I accidentally swiped two pages. I got to go back. So like, that's where all these peripherals come into play. Yeah. You know, you often musicians will have like, for when they're reading digitally, they'll have like a foot pedal, like a Bluetooth foot pedal right. to turn the pages for them. So like one page forward is one tap. One page back is like, say, two quick taps. Uh, there's a ton of different Bluetooth, like, you know, foot pedals on Amazon. Yeah. So you could like do research and stuff on that. But yeah, um, I would probably say get the Guido. It, it is seriously the most polished product. And, um, you know, you just unfortunately with the ink, you don't really have like a lot of alternatives to like really do it. If but you want a dual screen device. If you want it done it properly, yeah. Uh, the question was 10.3 though, Mike. Gun to your head, what do you think we could offer this? Uh, we could recommend to this wonderful user of ours for 10.3 note take, uh, music uh, reading, if you had to. You can't. Yeah. Uh, you, it's, it's. So, okay, someone says if it were to be only one screen, oh, he, he said it again, Cornelius. If it were, to, uh, if you had to choose only one screen, what would be your recommendation? It'd be like Mike said, you get, you get a Bluetooth foot pedal with maybe a, a Note 3. It, Note 3 is fast, it's not going to lag. It has the Onyx branded in house, non third party Bluetooth pedal that you can connect. That, that would be our, our recommendation is that, um, yeah, that, that's what we would say. I mean, yeah, Mike is right. Guido or Padmu, that's what they're made for. But they're they're expensive. They're like $1,600, $2,000. So yeah, I mean, sheet money. music is supposed to be on an A4 document. It if is. you read it on a smaller screen, you're going to literally have to like be this close yeah. to like read it you would say bumblebee to, like, song you know the, 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 the you see all the little notes you know in the flight of the bumblebee yeah so like when you, you picture that but scaled down to a smaller screen smaller than it should be because sheet music's pretty big should fit on a big screen that's why all the big manufacturers guido padmu they work on a big screen if you have a small one yeah you're gonna be you know leaning in and then you're like oh i forgot to change pages oh, oh. so like if you just pay the money and get it right the first time, then it's done right the first time. Yeah, you need at least a 13.3 to read the nomenclature. Uh, otherwise, it's 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 too small and too jumbled together. Uh, to be honest, like, if you're going to read digitally with she music, buy a 13.3 at the minimum. If, That's if, right. And yeah. if you can't afford it, just buy book music. Like, I mean, that that's probably your cheapest bet is to continue to buy like physical she music because like you can buy it pretty cheap and stuff but i mean i recognize that like with digital she music you can get a lot of like for free you know especially the royalty free where like copyrights have expired i i recognize that and printing that off you know on bulk it's just not feasible and you can't even get like proper booklets together with that. So, I mean, I recognize, but yeah, unfortunately it's either spend the money to buy 13.3, at least one single screen, like um, right. a max Lumi. If you could buy like a max three pro use somewhere, um, that's fine. You know, get something. Uh, like yeah. That. If, if you had to, yeah, you can even get like an older Sony and just run PDFs. If you really had to, it doesn't but, have Bluetooth. Yeah. It doesn't uh, no, run. no, you you couldn't do the pedal. That's right. You'd have to swipe. So if you're playing the triangle and you just hang your triangle up, you could like ping and then turn the page and wait 20 minutes for your turn. Uh, yeah, there's really no answer to that question, unfortunately. Uh, we've had three people ask about the Guido, and I'll just put a link in the chat right now. If you are interested in the Guido, it's a couple pennies. Um, our our goody reader japan branch has the capabilities of bringing it to you so yeah go ahead and just to remind you guys we are running the contest right now we have had one two three four five six seven eight we have had nine entries into this uh so if you do want this phone for free it is absolutely yours it is a chinese only phone we don't know what it says we don't know what it is but it's yours for free tell us why you want it and you'll be entered into the contest i believe uh mike's gonna do a screen share uh, yeah, you look like you're doing a screen share. He's like dialed in. So the Guido is actually like not as expensive as I thought. It's like like thirteen or fourteen hundred bucks US. So well, uh, that's this still is... a lot in some markets, man. We picture someone in like a, a country we deal with a lot, like Chile and and like Argentina. That ends up being a big money for conversion. Yeah, I thought it was like more expensive than that. So they must have like lowered the price. So yeah, this is what you get here. It's like a hinged design. So like it actually will like close and stuff like that. It is actually hinged too. The the Padmu isn't, but this one is. Yeah. So it has SD card, yeah. HDMI, like. 
uh, it has sensors here. So you can just like put your finger to it. That's you don't right. actually have to like turn the page. You could just like put it this like this close to it. Yeah. Or go like that and it'll turn the page because it has like sensors. So this is what it would look like if like you were just like holding it folded up and stuff like that. So you can check out just like this site Guido Music uh, to like learn sort of like all about it. Uh, they only ship to specific countries. So uh, know that. But yeah, they even sell like an official foot pedal and stuff. Well, also, that's where we come in is that if you that's why we're such an international friendly company is that if you can't get this, we will help you get it. That's what we do with the Remarkable. We sell the Remarkable to Madagascar and Tasmania. You can't buy that if you go to Remarkable.com. So that's where we come in. Uh, and uh, alongside with uh, Michael's screen share, I just put a link to the video where we had two of the managing directors who created the Guido fly from Japan to Vancouver to meet us. And we filmed a uh, on-site, on-the-scene um, video. We did a first looks and we did a review of it, of Michael walking through everything. And I was on camera. This is when we were a little two-man operation. We just put that in the chat. So if you guys want to see that, we've just copy and pasted it a couple times. Um, yeah, grab the Guido. and Yeah, uh, it's like yeah. not the best video quality because like we just brought like a camcorder with oh, us. Oh, that was like, like last minute, man. We yeah. didn't know what to expect. They're like, yo, we're at the Wall Center or the Sheridan or something. And they're like, can you meet us? We're like, uh, yeah, okay. Be sure, when do you want to meet us? They're like, in 30 minutes, is that yeah. okay? Like, um, yeah. uh, apparently, yeah. you know, you saw the Guido that I shared with you guys. Do you know who the developer was? It, it was the same, I forget his name, but it was the same Japanese developer that actually made the Sony DPT right. S1, the first Sony digital paper. He was the lead designer that actually did the CAD design, put to all, you know, assembled everything like made the first prototypes and stuff and then after that was released he left sony and like co-founded this like other company which is why like the guido is the best design like digital it's sheet music really creator because like they have patents on the hinge system like, they made the it hinge, yeah, yeah it was like it's Sony level quality because like the guy who made it is like a long-term Sony executive and like, not just an executive, but like a creator, someone yeah. that like, not, not like a Johnny Ive like level, like of, 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 of like a creator and designer, but his dudes like for e-ink designs, this guy is like the bee's knees. And if you want further evidence of that, the Sony DPT RP1 has been consistently selling since 2016 and is still sold to this day it's so well built fujitsu huge company it's been around for 70 years they make everything from escalators to like air conditioners they picked it up and have this huge advertisement campaign and production run of the new quaderno that you've been seeing and you mean the rp1 Lock not the s1 not the S1. That's 2014. Since 2016, yeah. the RP1. Uh, and um, Quirk Logic has picked it up as well because Sony pulled out of the US market. They're still selling through Goody Reader and through their own channels in Japan, but we sell everywhere in the world. Uh, Quirk Logic picked it up and put their own Android spin on it and everything. Sony is so well built from the get go that every single manufacturer is still using the 2014 stylus pen that was on the original s1 to this very day there is something to be said about sony's quality they're not the most mainstream they dropped off the face of the earth with consumer e-readers we understand that but they're still very much alive and their quality kind of lives on uh you know what's really cool though uh when we went to a trade show what's Mike, really cool oh everything man um yeah you were saying like the guy from this company worked at this company it's pretty cool because uh the guy who actually helped design bokeen back in uh, 2014 13 kind of thing he actually worked on kingdom hearts which is a, a disney and squaresoft uh, anime crossover game and uh, franchise from uh, japan it's like a you know rpg video game live action uh sorry uh, action role-playing game it was just kind of cool to see like other people working on like other things you know what i mean like it's just it, and it's kind of like wow small world kind of thing it's just something very interesting i found yeah it seems like a lot of people came from various industries yeah or they moved uh, into the e-readers yeah e -ink in general um 
Yeah, so we seem to have answered uh, that gentleman's question pretty successfully. And um, we're getting, yeah, we're getting lots of entries for this phone. You know, we did actually get someone that says, I want it. His name is Ah Yu. And he says he speaks Chinese. So I believe he's going to, and he said, I can read it. And like a little grinning smiley face. So if you want this, I do believe you will be in the running for this. Everyone's in the running. We have about 10 entries. And off camera, I have been charging it. And while Michael was... Uh, uh, talking about something, um, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. Ranting uh, and raving. I, ranting and raving. I actually pressed a button that was on the bottom and it skipped over the login procedures. So we are actually in the phone now. So the phone does actually function. And you'll see here, there's some stuff. And it is all in Chinese. I just checked the settings as well. Um, is that the and there was like a, uh No, it's just, dude, it's just like the little app screen icon at the top it's like i don't even know if you can sideload apks i didn't check but uh it does look like um i did go to went to like top menu here and then i went to settings but there didn't seem to be anything about language in there so i'm guessing it's chinese only uh before we announce the winner i'll, I'll put on facebook that uh, this is or is not uh internationally usable but it does look like um yeah, if, if you guys want this, it's still up for grabs. I mean, when the show ends, that'll be the cutoff. And then we'll put this on uh, put this on Facebook. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you, you can probably side it, load in your own content. And uh, it'll read to some degree based on what kind of uh, book reader they have. But I don't know. It's something to give back. It's what are we going to do with it, Mike? <laughs> Throw it outside? I just have like, I on the box, I have like other things like on top of it. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's not a paperweight. This should go to someone who can use it. <laughs> Or somebody that at least wants to, like, resell it. Or somebody that can, like, maybe film a video on it when we send it to them. You know what I mean? That would be cool. Like, if this AU gentleman ends up winning it, uh, he, you know, speaks Chinese and can get use out of it. It's like, that'd be cool. So, yeah, Mike, what is your favorite e-reader of the year? A lot of people want to know, and a lot of people have been asking. So I don't think we have a definitive answer. I want you to answer this definitively. What is your favorite e-reader of the year? There's a lot, I know. No pressure, except all pressure. Uh, okay, do it's I hard. Want, you don't have do, to answer. You can just chat, man. Do I want to like name something completely crappy that like I use sometimes, or do you I want to like? You know, I don't want to say anything, but like the, the remember that Art Attack like one that's like, took if, like five minutes just to turn one page. That was awesome. It was like fifty nine dollars. <laughs> It's like literally the worst e-reader that we ever reviewed. It was like the worst yeah. e-reader, I think, when it came out in 2018. Then like e-readers that we reviewed in like 2007. I think the guy after, and we're not, we're not cruel. We're not devious. We're not children. We very much take an unbiased approach to everything. We sell everything. We review everything from the whiskey EE, right? Which is nothing. Everything to the Amazon Kindle. We received this art attack way back when. It was so bad. It was so bad after we're done we're just like our hands on our head mike's just like this we're just like I, what do you want to do man and we it just was said only it was bad. one out of ten i've ever given to it like a bad. product the guy emailed him mike and he had some response it was like we don't believe our product this that or the other thing but he might as well have just said hey because it was man it was so bad we couldn't even say in our own conscious like we couldn't say it was good it was so slow it was so underachieving and it was no fault of their own really because Artitech has some products in their lineup that are good this one particular item was so genuinely poor that there was no part of our journalistic integrity that could say it was good i believe mike's gonna do a screen show here uh, yeah i'm trying to find it it looks like um, they may have gotten out of e-readers I wonder why it was really bad, man. And like, uh, I, I think, yeah, it was, it was like four year old technology. You know what the thing is too? There are companies that are really high end that make great e-readers that make some clunkers. Look at Kobo. What did they release this year, Mike? The Kobo Nia. It might as well have been a paperweight because Kobo makes some fantastic stuff. They had the best e-reader of 2020 is the Kobo Forma. They have uh, agreements with um, uh, Tolino to make amazing e-readers over in Germany. But this Nia came out of a, a different production plan, out of character, out of design, completely outmatched, could not fight in the ring. And it was like 2017 status in 2020. And 
it was a shock to us. It was a shock. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I have a Voyage in my bag. That's yeah. sort of the e-reader. that. Like, I like that one. Um, I, it was just, yeah, I think it was like kind of the coolest designed Kindle to date. It was just interesting at the time. I, I still think it's, you know, like haptic feedback buttons and stuff. Like, you know, just... It, it was just cool. So I still use it, even though it's like a bit older and there's like a lot of new stuff that's come out since, uh, you know, for its price, it's really sort of hard to beat it. Uh, even though it's like discontinued on Amazon and stuff like you know, you're not going to like really find, get the opportunity, too many opportunities to like buy it new. You, yeah. You, you, right now it's like, you kind of buy it used and stuff. I bought it when it was new and just kind of held on to it. Yeah. It's, right. It's pretty awesome. But to be honest, I, I read more print books uh, yeah. And I do ebooks just because, like, I enjoy buying hardcovers. I like going to the bookstore. I like browsing around for like an hour, just like flipping through stuff. I mean, pre COVID, right? I've bought a few books like online uh, since COVID from like Amazon and stuff. Like, nice. um, I'm in the middle of reading Barack Obama's like autobiography or like his third one or something like that. A Promised Land. Apparently, that's like sold like the most non-fiction books since it was released like it sold like so many titles i think it sold like a hundred and something thousand titles like in its first week and for books that's generally like unheard of like in the modern sort of era like yeah post harry potter post hunger games like post 50 shades of gray like there's very few titles that come out that actually like sell like that so yeah i'm sort of reading that and i like yeah so that's that's the book i'm reading now yeah, you know, I, um, to be completely honest, I don't find myself grabbing a lot of e-readers as much as I do multimedia e-ink devices. So <clears throat> I honestly grab like um, uh, the Alita is a good go-to. It's priced well. And it's like, I don't feel like I'm holding something that if I drop it, I'm going to worry. At the same point, it's not not garbage. Uh, Super Note's great for drawing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that came out, but um yeah, I'd have to say like maybe a smaller, like uh, the Aries is nice. It's nice 7.8. It's good to hold. And honestly, I uh, when me and the uh, production team sit around, we, on, we often do kind of just use uh, note-taking devices. We use pen and paper as well when we like pass things around. But it's nice to have like, you know, okay, we're going to do this. And we want to, uh, like when we were doing the color e-ink uh, history video, we we're sitting around, we're like, okay, what happened? 2009. Oh, yeah, Fujitsu made the blah, blah, blah. And it's just nice to have like a, a digital note-taking slate. I, I kind of find myself gravitating a little bit more towards the Wacom enabled devices rather than the regular e-readers. But if I had to choose one, form us pretty pimp, man. It's like a good form factor. feels good in the hand. Uh, eight inches is like a pretty good size. And no other devices are really eight. There's 7.8, 7, 9.7. 7. There aren't a lot of eights. And it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I don't use very e-notes in my own life. Uh, oh, there we go. We can share. <laughs> like mainly because like I don't really have time to draw like and and you know and well, I'm not drawing like, manga man it's planning <laughs> I know but I mean um yeah just like I'm um, if I take notes it's like I make you know I edit calendar events like on my iPhone or like yeah. note things like you know I gotta check this place out I gotta buy the you know this is my to-do list like for groceries so I gotta buy this I gotta buy that you know I don't want to be carrying around like a note-taking device like to do that you know it's just it's easier to do stuff like that like on my phone um it just I wish the Apple Pencil kind of worked uh, That'd be on cool. like iPhones and stuff yeah kind of like, a, like a Galaxy Note how yeah you know the stylus is sort of designed to be interacted with that would be cool I would use that more often like in terms of drawing like on a capacitive screen and i recognize that i don't need the apple pencil i could just buy like a capacitive you know screen stylus that works yeah, yeah. on any screen and stuff like that but yeah that's not my style like it just when i have downtime like you know literally i'm writing and researching and doing articles like on the website and like working with freelancers working with editorial staff for literally about eight plus hours like a day sometimes more if, if there's like a lot of stuff coming out because then it's yeah. like also taking photos like talking with industry insiders like it's it's busy like doing goody readers like i'm working more than i'm doing anything else so if oh, i'm yeah, stepping if, if i'm stepping away from work it's like i'm enjoying myself like i'm 
uh, reading a book, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm taking a walk, I'm I'm Struggles. running errands, yeah, like getting my 10k steps in a day and stuff like that. Like, you know, man, people have this like grand vision of what like you know paradise is, sports cars and yachts and stuff. Honestly, man, it's like breath of fresh air, taking a walk. Can't put a price on that. You know, like we had fires early on this year. Australia had fires, BC had fires. When the air is all smoky and smoggy and stuff, it's like you can't. What are you going to do? Buy clean air? No. I mean, you can buy that air in a can, but it's only good for a puff. Putting a price on like enjoying yourself and just being like chill and happy at who you are, legit. It's like that's that's awesome. So yeah, I know you. Uh, I know Mike recently has been sending me his uh, walk logs. He's like, "Yo, man, check this out. I did like six point two k today." I'm like, "Oh, radical!" And like, yeah, man, going on walks if it's something as simple as that and you're enjoying yourself, that's that's great. Yeah, like to be yeah, honest, to like I've been sending like a lot of those to you because like I've been making a conscientious like That's effort, good. I guess like the last month or so to like you know get eight to ten thousand steps a day yep. to walk at least like six kilometers, like and however many steps, like Here, you know I'll, when when yeah. we when I used to cab and stuff, I'll just walk now. Like I'm I'm just trying to just I don't know, just be healthier, and it's it's great because like I'm losing weight. Like my face is like a bit thinner. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think I've lost. I'm, I'm like... gonna, sh I'm gonna show everyone why it doesn't reveal any personal information. This is one of Mike's uh, kills. Five point six eight km. He sent it over to me, and he's like, "Yo, man, check this out." And I was like, "That's, that's pretty good, man." And like, honestly, six k is nothing to shake a stick at. That's pretty far. Yeah. So, and yeah. my usual thing was like. 1.5k a day like you know like two 2500 steps a day instead of like seven to ten thousand so yeah it's like i feel better like it's funny like when you lose weight and you spend more time like being active and stuff it's like mentally you sort of get that like endorphin rush and it stays yeah. with you like longer so you people often talk about like runner's high like when you uh when you're running and stuff like that like when i walk i'm just not like to do it's like no I'm, no I'm, I'm walking fast like i'm not like power walking you know yeah. but it's like you know I, I walk pretty fast if i'm just walking by myself like i got my earbuds yeah. in and it's like you know i'll walk like 20 blocks in both directions with like being aimless and like i live in vancouver i live like four blocks from like the best from the pacific ocean so it's like i'm there a lot you know and um it's better places to like uh you know there's, there's, it's hard to like beat sort of like the vancouver skyline just like a few blocks from my house no that's pretty nice uh someone in, said right now uh, in the uk it's very easy to hit eight steps uh, eight thousand steps per day and i know what you're talking about i got a bunch of friends in the uk some places in the uk have these row housing row housing and the only way to kind of get through them is to like go to like a pass through. So you got to like walk down this long street. It's like, okay, finally I can get through and I got to like double back. And there's these like, you know, blocks of row housing that you just, the only way to get through is to either bust through someone's door and walk out the back or go around the pack of row housing. So uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know what you're talking about there. Um, yes. Uh, I, uh, Skyhawk says, uh, we might be able to use this phone. I'm in the contest for this phone. Again, I'll refresh. Cause every time I do, there's more people that enter. This phone is an e-ink smartphone. I'll just touch on it one second. It's yours absolutely for free. It does work. Get your contest entry in now, because after this video, we will be putting this on Facebook and we will announce the winner. Uh, yes. Um, Skyhawk, that's actually very written, very similar to Japanese, which I can read. So, um, I've looked through and there isn't much about language, but we will see if you can change the language on this. Um, someone said, um, uh, queen cats, a longtime viewer said, how did you guys meet Michael? Um, well, uh, I'll start it off. We were working in Vancouver at this, uh, satellite shop. Uh, Michael was on uh, shipping and uh, like uh, a lot of the computer work, the back end stuff for the store and stuff, this random store. And uh, I was just doing like front counter work and like, you know, putting together satellite dishes. It's a true story. And I didn't know that guy. I didn't know Mike. And then, you know, Mike had this genius idea to get into e-readers and kind of ran with it. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I just, uh, I just graduated from like, uh, I think at the time, like, I just graduated from school and like I quit a few jobs that I was like, you know, I got fired. So I'm not really good. At, I'm not, <laughs> I, really, I, I quit. I, I got fired. <laughs> yeah. So 
um, before I worked, before I met Peter, I like worked like a series of like customer service jobs and I hate customer service. Oh, I hate God, people yeah. for the most part. So I was working <laughs> this bagel. That's store. why you don't do the customer service here. I, yeah. I was like working at this bagel shop and like, um, they were just, okay. If anybody here who's watching has worked customer service, has been a waitress, has been like, you know, in a, in a clothing store, any type of like interpersonal um things and like when people are rude to you you just want to tell them to go f themselves but you hold yourself and like not say that and try to fake smile and be nice that's not me i would ban people from the store and i would say it with such glee i would be like i never want to see your face in this store again you're banned and like i'd write their name in like a little ban list and like put it like there so like if i ever yeah be like girl with scraggly like hair and like witchy glasses you know i wouldn't draw a picture of her but i would like write like a loose description and stuff and i guess after like the sixth or seventh ban uh they didn't really like me doing that so like they told yeah, me yeah why'd like, you get stop. fired mike <laughs> uh, well it wasn't that it was like uh, oh, what so i worked at a ba- like uh, this is like at a bagel store and this was on granville island and like one of the the the, the ways that everybody sort of war- behind the scenes would work as they would trade. So a butcher yeah. would trade a steak for this, or yeah. um, someone working at a chocolate shop would trade fudge for like a cream cheese bagel. So it, it was like yeah. this like secret black Harder market. System. Yes. So yeah. I like would take stuff and like, I wouldn't actually pay for it and I would trade it away for other stuff and I would give it to like some of the employees and stuff, but the boss didn't like that. And that's when I got fired. So well, I but, mean, like, I that's, was so that, was the, that was I mean, the norm, but yeah, yeah, you're not directly selling the goods for money. So I can see why that uh, would lead in your, uh, your uh, employment termination. Yeah. So I was like totally happy because like, I, I hate dealing with like people. Uh, did, did you say the name of the bagel shop, Mike? No, Seagulls Bagels. But did you just say that right now or no? no yeah, I just said it now. It was because someone... Shop. No, but someone commented about a minute ago and says seagulls dot dot dot. Yeah. So it was well, the one. Wait, wait, hold on. Does that mean that that person knew that you worked there? Because this person, well, they, because they said that, it before you said it. Yeah, it was maybe like, um, I think that there's like two bagel stores. I think this was the one on Granville oh. Island. So it was, it was seagulls. Oh, or- so there was only one. No, she's right. Yeah, no, that's right. And I think that's queen cat's girl lives in van or around van. So, yeah. Um, oh, so yeah, there you go. She says, I know it. Okay. Well, perfect. Dang. Small world, man. Yeah, you know, I I love Granville Island, especially like during like the summertime. Like the patios there are like so good. Like almost like all the restaurants like have patios. Even some of the hotel restaurants that you can go to have patios, and you're right overlooking the ocean, so it's wow. like the perfect view. Like to yeah, be with yeah, some yeah. friends, drink some Chardonnay or something like yeah. that, and just like chat. Like I don't know. That's what I really like. I like going to the, the to the public market and like buying overpriced fruit and like stuff and just like making like a day of it because it's like literally like a 25 minute walk from where I live now so it's just like I never really went there this the very oh. much this year just because like COVID yeah. and you know well you don't want any sneeze bagels with COVID on it so yeah, yeah I man. could uh, very much understand that um yeah man we've been getting a lot of headway here uh we should tell you guys that the super note contest wrapped with a very good success and in fact someone from japan won it which uh, makes it very easy to ship it's our first winner from japan ever we've had winners from singapore south korea south africa um all over the place win our contests we have another contest coming up after this video as well not this phone it's something really cool so look on youtube in about an hour or so i think it should be done and uh people will be putting that up um yeah man we covered a lot of stuff we had 10 entries into this uh phone contest if you guys want this phone i keep touching on it because you're watching live it is yours absolutely for free it is written all in chinese if you do read chinese then this will be uh useful to you and uh Uh, uh, what uh, happened you know how we were talking about the guido oh yeah somebody like wrote a review someone like commented on like the review post we did i just want to read it because it's funny yeah 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 go under under no circumstances should you buy this device 
I did, and it's a huge mistake. You no. will lose the pen within days, if not hours, and then the device becomes completely and entirely useless. A replacement pen is $50 plus $120 in shipping. And he's like, $120 shipping plus customs and duties. It's like, yeah. And he just kind of goes on. But it's like, yeah, it's, that's one of the downsides. Like, you know, with these like devices that interact with it, with the digital note-taking device, it's just replacement yeah. styluses. And if you buy from the manufacturer, man, sometimes they just like ding you. Like, it's cheap, but then like shipping $120. Bokeen's like that too. Like, I wanted to order a Bokeen, like another Bokeen I haven't sent to Canada. It was like, you know, 90 euros. And then the shipping was 150 euros. The shipping was like almost double what the unit cost. And it's like, who are you shipping through? Like a freaking carrier pigeon? Are you like, no, man. are you nano? They're... Like, are you teleporting it to me using like some sort of like advanced like teleportation system? Are you breaking down the molecules and reassembling them like somewhere else? Like, are you using like the, 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 the borrowing tunnel system like that's in prototype to like bring it under the ocean? It's like, how are you doing it? No, we're doing it through the postal system. It's like, yeah. Yeah, great. I shipped through the postal system. It's like literally like Months. less than 30 euros. Like, and yeah. it'll get there in like two weeks. You're doing it like freaking oh, yeah, overnight as like the only option to like do it. It's like they have base costs. So when that guy did that review and it is coming from Japan, they probably bought that pen and they chucked it in like a huge box with bubble wrap and stuff and then they just launched it out and yeah man depending on where you live that could get very expensive um i remember we sold something to like malawi uh africa and the guy was like where's my stuff and i was like you ordered a screen protector sir and he's like i want it fast and it's like we checked the rate and i think the rate was like 67 dollars starting so it's like i can understand that the shipping can be expensive even on small items just because it's small remember there has to be a guy a truck a plane and a company that will agree to take your small item and ship it to your house so I doubt there's every, everyone jumping at the chance to ship to the depths of the mountains of Malawi, if there's mountains there, I don't know. Yeah, but or yeah. if like you live in like Machu Picchu, Peru, it's like, yeah. have you seen the road going up the mountain? It's like one way like road, but there's two lanes of traffic on a one lane street, yeah. like 7,000 miles above like sea level. And it's like a tourism bus, like with, you know, they're both sort of like, you know, going off the side of the mountains with like donkey yeah. caravans and stuff. It's like, <laughs> if you live there, who's going to ship? Yeah. I mean, like literally stuff is delivered Ugh. by donkeys and stuff. So yeah. like if you yeah. watch like Hell's Kitchen and like Gordon Ramsay is calling someone an effing donkey, it's donkey, like, yeah. you know, yeah. literally donkeys are still being used to deliver packages it's in true. some places. It's true. And it's not that cheap. You try delivery through a donkey, they need food. They need poop. They need someone to clean after the poop. There, there's you know? people that have ordered from us that live in Tonga, which is just barely like barely an inhabitable place it's not even an island it's like an atoll which means that the piece of land just barely crests the middle of the ocean you ever tried shipping something at tonga they don't have a plane that lands in tonga with 700 people on it you got to go to another place like either the uk or somewhere close and then they transfer you over to like three or four freight of uh, a uh, freighter uh, ch charter planes or whatever they're called so your plane goes from big to small to small to small to finally you're there and maybe your parcel's finally on there but like a lot of these people they expect the world and they're like i ordered my nine dollar screen protector i need it today it's like you live in tonga how am i going to get this to you you live in maldives you know what i mean there aren't planes that go there every day like los angeles like chicago illinois london uk you get some london uk in three days you know because a plane's going there Plane's not going to Machu Picchu, Mike. Plane's not going to the tip of Argentina that you have to like drive up a mountain. They're just not going there. So yeah, uh, in terms of shipping, I get where that guy's review is coming from because yeah, it, he could be out of uh, out of area. It's called, and that just comes with a surcharge because DHL's got to get it there, right? So you imagine it goes on a plane, it lands in you know that country, and then a guy gets his daily report and it's like okay i go here here what's this and it's like you have to deliver one parcel 25 miles into the mountain how do you expect it to get there some guy has to bring it 
and he has to drive a little DHL truck up the mountain or whatever, or contract it to some other dude or whatever the case may be. But the package has to physically get there. So when you guys are wondering about all these shipping rates and stuff, that's the reality is that people have to bring them. It's not teleportation technology, as you said, Mike. Yeah, I just want like, yes. a, uh, like a worldwide borrowing tunnel system yeah. where like, you know, you go, you're like on a, like a sort of like an air pressure thing, like, you know, 300 miles an hour. It's like you can get from like LA to San Francisco in like, what is it? Like seven minutes? Like through that's like those tunnels. That's pretty system. crazy. That's yeah, that's a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah. We need something like that. Um, we're basically done with questions. We had 10 entries into this fabulous phone. Where did I even put it? Oh, it's over here. This fabulous phone, just mystery box. This is a mystery box. Um, and, uh, you know, even if you don't use the phone, you do get a QQ gift card, which is worth 10,000 remnant or yuan. So even that in and of itself is useful. And we're not going to reveal the code because you have to scratch that off after this video again. We will put this uh, winner on Facebook and we have a YouTube video with a, uh, another contest coming up after this uh, that will run till the end of the year. So I have a question about the, I, I have a question, Peter. Uh, about, about uh, the, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mike. Uh, yeah. The guy in the pink shirt. Uh, yeah. yeah. Michael Kozlowski, goodyreader.com. Uh, is oh, the calendar oh, uh, behind you up to date? Yeah. That's, that's uh, December. Yeah. 12th. Okay. 12th month. Yeah. Yeah. I just if you wanted... look at the previous videos we've done, that will be uh, coinciding with the correct uh, month. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, yeah. like, I know a lot of people who have calendars that don't keep the calendar month, like, up to date. They'll just, like, put a calendar oh. up and it'll be, like, always in July or something. You know what? You're right. Because my window calendar, no joke, <laughs> September, and it's all dusty. I haven't changed it. October november and december but we're already almost done the year so this is going into the recycling bin see that's why i had to ask because you're like, right I you're no you're you, shoot you're right i uh, don't i don't have calendars like in my place like at all like, yeah notice that yeah i not even like a fridge magnets like when when oh. dentists send them to me or like I, I subscribe to like some print magazines like um PC oh, gamer and like edge yeah. and retro gamer so right. uh they always send me calendars and like they immediately just go into like recycling because it's like i have my phone i'm i'm on my computer well why do we need like a paper calendar we're, and everything? we're very it's so accessible to the point where it's like what day is it oh it's that day it's like i don't need my calendar I yeah i just look I, at my like smartwatch it's like it tells me everything it tells me the yeah. air pressure system outside like you know i don't need to look at like uh you know, who needs like a, you know, I remember growing up, we had a thermometer like right outside the window so we could tell how cold it was outside. And like, I grew up in Northwestern Ontario. So this is like, with wind chill, it was like around like minus 35, like That's minus stupid. 40 Celsius. Uh, I don't know what that That's is. Fahrenheit. I, don't, I don't know the conversion with Fahrenheit, but like, that's pretty cold. That's like, uh, like Arctic circle cold. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you're you're like basically if you close your eyelids, your your eyelashes freeze. So like yeah. when you when you if you blink like this, it's like your it's tears, but it's like all it is is just ice because like everything's just like freezing. So it's like you need it. That's you know no joke in Canada you, during like the winters in a lot of yeah. places you need a toque. You know you need like like you need like like you know earmuffs or something like that because literally like all this stuff like freezes like if you if you go outside like and you you know your hair is kind of wet because you had a shower and you're going to school or something like that literally your hair will freeze into place and like yeah like it you know it won't you know snap off or anything but like if your hair is wet outside it'll it'll freeze like into place and like it won't like become unfrozen until like you know you go into someplace like warm so that's why i like vancouver because like it you know the coldest it gets is like what, like minus five. Like, you know, you know, yeah. it's like you kind of grew up here, very cold. so yeah, it's like oh Vancouver, no, yeah, my whole life, yeah. It's Vancouver's like a temperate rainforest, so you sort of yeah, like right. get like more rain than anything else. It might snow maybe once or twice a year, and like it'll be gone generally within one or two days. It's with like some London. Exceptions. 
it's like London for, you know, the UK and England. If you guys are familiar with that, if you're not to a lesser extent, it's like Seattle. If you're familiar with, uh, uh, the, uh, the USA, it's like Seattle. Uh, someone asked a question and he reminded us cause we missed it. What's currently the best e-ink monitor and what's the future? Uh, Cornelius, the best e-ink monitor right now is the Dasung. And, um, the future of e-ink monitors is actually devices that are doing all in ones like the max three, the max Lumi, the fact that you can plug into a, you can plug in an HDMI cable in a device that was not meant to do, um, uh screen sharing but can so that's kind of the future and obviously we hope to see some color although nothing's on the um nothing's on the horizon yet so that's yeah the there, that there's been some murmurings online that Dasung has a new product that they're gonna announce soon uh they they just like announced sort of like a couple of months ago that they're not an e-reader that they were doing a 10.3 inch version of that but it's been like an indiegogo development hell like they even sent us a review unit like no and we have direct connections with das and we sell their products they ship directly to the customer for us we re receive review samples press packages imagery we've received nothing on this new thing right like nothing as of yet no yeah. it's like a lot of these companies it's like uh, we'd like to order five of them. Sure, here's the, you know, here's the invoice. Pay us as soon as you can. Uh, hey, we heard you're releasing this new device. Can you send us a review sample? That's what we hear. <laughs> and then we don't hear back from them. Radio it's silence. Like, yeah, it's like, give us some money. No problem. Here you go. We're on, on top of it. Instant communication. Anything else? It's like. Uh, and that's why to this day we announced uh, we did a little bit of press uh, releases on the AI note from iFlyTech. iFlyTech was uh, one of the companies that made a fantastic color e-reader. We said, hey, uh, you know, we, we want to order some uh, iFlytechs. They're like, cool, here you go. Here's the thing. Here's the bill. We paid it. And we, we, we got a whole box of them. We're like, sweet. We said the AI note, we want to receive a free review sample. Hello? Anybody? Anybody? Months nothing because we need a review sample in order to drum up some business and drum up positive uh press around the product but they just won't do it they won't play ball so this is some companies that do that you know so yeah so that's why like we, we have to like buy retail in a lot of cases like for the stuff that we review just because like they don't want to send us stuff so that's you know when you don't when it. you donate like to our like live show or you type you click join and subscribe to like us and stuff like that um you know it, it helps us you know that money helps us buy these devices that these companies just won't ship us so like you know i want to review the desktop not an e-reader i think they have a 7.8 inch and a 10.3 inch versions That's i really crazy. want to review them because like they're billing what do they do of, how are they yeah. you know like all i know is like their indiegogo listings and stuff that i've written about it which is just like you know a list of specs like and, and the things that it can do but i want to know more about the things that it can't do and the things that it can do does it do it well or just is it just serviceable and passable like should you spend four hundred dollars and buy it that's what i want to know so apparently yeah. desktop is going to be releasing another color monitor or sorry uh, another monitor oh. um but the last one was like touchscreen and front light, two things that they've never included in a monitor before. So I heard that they're going to be doing a color monitor with Ian Clito too. Uh, but I don't know when they're going to announce it. This is just like what like people have told me, like sort of like I have Chinese connections, like in I just say the upstream supply chain as like you know because that's basically who it is. It's from like the factories that sub that Dasung subcontracts like certain components like for the device so like they tell me like who their customers are how many units that they're ordering and stuff like that so usually i could find out what these companies are doing i you know i don't have any connections at the factories that make e-ink panels because there's literally two in the whole world that do it so uh but everyone else kind of gives me feeds me info so that's yeah. cool no, it's good. Uh, someone asked, can we ship you stuff like fan mail and such? Yes, yeah, so we get fan mail and mail 
all the time, probably twice a day. That's precisely what this is. As I said at the beginning of the show two hours ago, this was sent to us randomly, and that's why we're giving it away. We give away all our stuff we get for free unless we need it for testing, like the Remarkable. Someone said, can we buy your unit? And we said no, because we still need it for testing. But this, stuff like this, people send us stuff, we look at it, and we say thank you very much, and we, uh, we appreciate that. We do some videos, we send it off to someone. So yeah, you can for sure send us uh stuff in the mail uh we sent you our email there and we will send you our address uh, privately if you want to send us uh, some stuff yeah it's uh, not like we don't have like a p.o box where like people like you know that we that we hype up it's like you know if you want to send us letters or send us stuff you know this, yeah. is, this is it we sort of just do it on an invite only basis like people that's right like, sent us like old e-ink phones and like you know kindles from like 2010 you know like we want like all your old retro tech that like you know as long as it's working you know uh because sometimes we do like a modern review of yeah, a yeah, yeah. device you know and or we like you know take like you know a old sony prs two three three hundred and, and compare it against like you know something that's current on the market yeah. just so people could see the evolution from an e-reader from like 10 years ago to now what's really changed you know th these are the types of like questions that interest me and i'm sure would interest you guys so if you guys got like a bunch of like old e-readers or like one that's just like collecting dust in a drawer somewhere as long as it's like old like five to like six seven years old um you know well, i mean it could be even newer i mean someone sent us their yoda phone too and said here you guys go and we were like sweet so we did like a, a top ink smartphone list you know we give shout out i mean like it's could be anything i mean we get stuff all the time from people and sometimes it goes uh just into the dust because it's like here's a broken kindle basic four and it's like thanks <laughs> but it doesn't do anything it doesn't turn on so <laughs> But what do you want yeah. me to do with this, right? Drop test something that's already broken? Like, no. Uh, yeah, but yeah, for sure. Send us stuff. Um, we wanted to just give a shout out to everyone this year. It's been a fantastic year. We wanted to, uh, we, we almost hit 100K subscribers and we're still going to give away that massive Lumi giveaway package to one lucky person. We hit 91,000 subscribers as of yesterday. So uh, we want to thank all you guys. And we also want to thank our new program we've been running for the past couple months, the VIP on YouTube. And if you guys want to get in before the end of the year, at the end of the year, we're going to be messaging you each individually, personally, everyone that has become a VIP member or a paid member on YouTube will be receiving a special gift. Seriously, it is our way to give back to you. It could be anywhere from a free case to a free $10 gift card to our store. And people who are a paid member already on YouTube, uh, we have about 40 odd paid members right now, will each be receiving uh, free gift cards and free cases and uh, accessories for their unit. And we're going to ask you what you want. So we don't just send you something that's irrelevant to you. So seriously, if you guys become, uh, we give back, we, you know, it's, it's way more value than what you actually pay for. So it's mostly to just drum up the support for everything rather than us keeping your $40 that it generates per year. I mean, we've just spent two hours each on video for you guys to chat. So it's not about the money. It's more about us giving back to you guys. And yeah, if you want to become a paid member, every contest you enter is 10 entries and we give you guys uh, birthday gifts and we give you guys year-end gifts as well so yeah that's what it's all about yeah i mean uh traffic for like the website this year is like at record levels i think like what uh 180 million dollar like 180 million people visited the site this year and have read at least one article whereas like i think like the prior year was like 120 million so it's like an increase of like i don't know something i'm not sure <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a pretty good increase yeah we we do appreciate everyone's uh uh involvement and we saw a lot of chat tons of chat today hundreds of messages just you guys chatting amongst yourself that's what it's all about you know if uh, we're we're here to answer any questions you guys have if you have uh, uh if you want us to call you you can send us a message and say call me on the phone one of us personally will call you guys and we're serious we don't outsource our customer service to a call center we all take them internally in the company that's how uh, we help you guys yeah um i want to share something with you guys i i don't really use i'm not really don't read chat very much during the youtube type stuff but uh we started a slack channel um so this is the address 
Take some water. Uh, if you visit that, that's nice. sort of like, you know how you guys are talking with live chat. So Slack is sort of like the equivalent of YouTube live chat. It's sort of like Discord, but it's like more geared towards like live chat and stuff nice. and asking us questions and stuff like that. So I think we have like 18 members so far and we just nice. like launched it a couple of days ago. So uh, if you go to like our website, there's like a little uh, like chat thing, uh, like a Slack icon there, but I posted it there. So um, you guys can at least like, I don't know, check it out if yeah. you kind of like want to. It's just like a, a live chat system that's like, I don't know, trying to build like kind of like a community off of YouTube, off of Goody Reader. So, yeah. um, you know, we don't have any moderation tools. So like no one's going to get banned unless like you're like spam the N word or something. But generally yeah, we, like people yeah. are pretty chill in our like even just like people just like come by and like comment on a video. Like generally everyone's pretty cool. Like we don't have like spammers people that spam www yeah 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 we uh we don't like negativity we get enough negativity online we'll leave it online uh these chats these shows they're all about positivity they're all about us giving back to you guys listening to what you have to say answering your questions as directly as we possibly can uh if you want to be if you guys want to be negative go on some forums post some hate about how much you hate us that's absolutely you're right and uh yeah you know do what you guys that's what red that's what reddit is for. that's what reddit's for they're to take us down so uh, yeah no absolutely we're here to give back and uh, it's been a fantastic year we will see you we're not stopping these these shows we're still going to do them but it's the we're end we're not of the you mean we have to do more of them <laughs> we got to do them every day every, every week till we die man yeah we'll be back oh. with you guys on uh, the second of january so um yeah we'll be uh back in the new year but as for 2020 we want to thank you guys a million times over it's been uh fantastic all of your orders all of your concerns all of your questions all of your input all of your suggestions has led us to review things we never knew existed receive things we never knew that were out there and just get uh better communication with company you know heads and just get more contracts and basically just become a better company to help you guys out even more. So yeah, more in 2021 from Goody Reader. Less in less. 2021 from Goody Reader. Less is more, more We're of a faceless like, company. Just wear less masks. Less videos, less articles. No less more conversation. Yep. Yeah. Get it's rid of like, our phone number online. No more emails. Just have a blanket basic contact us form. Yeah, with like no, uh, no like we will never respond. Constantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll or we do, it's like months later. Yeah, thank um, you for your inquiry. Your item is shipped. It's like, I know that. <laughs> uh, yeah, like um, be more unaccessible. Yeah. Like less content, like less stuff. Where instead of talking about e-readers, maybe we'll be like, we'll be like the TMZ website of e-readers. Oh, God, we'll, yeah. We'll like, is a new Kindle coming out? Justin Bieber thinks so. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Imagine like a uh, TMZ channel of like e-readers. It's like, yeah. did you see the case that they put on their Kindle? Yeah, scandalous. <laughs> oh oh god. my god, that's actually giving me some awesome ideas. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's not like giving like you nothing. The top ten celebrity like Kindle cases. Number ten will blow your mind. <laughs> the, those uh clickbait sites. You won't oh, believe what happens next. Yeah, oh, totally. God. It has like a Six picture of an totally. e-reader and someone with some mysterious cream on their finger. And it's like, what will happen to the Kindle? And then it's just like, it goes off the rails. It's you click like on it and it's like, sign up. page slideshow and every like yeah. two pages is like a full page ad. That's right. You don't even, half of these sites you go to on these clickbait things, you don't even know what you're looking at. There's so many ads. You don't even know what the, the, the focal point is. You, you figure you look in the center, but no, it's like maybe the thing on the top right corner and everything's like, you are the winner, Las Vegas package. <laughs> and it's like, what, what, what even is this? What's the point? I understand clickbait. I mean, I click on stuff too sometimes, you know, it's like, look at this cool car. I'm like, that's 100% clickbait, but I want to see it. And you go to it and it's like, Caitlyn Jenner does something and you're like, ah, oh, this is not even relevant. So yeah, no, man, we're not going to be, uh, 
we're not gonna be doing that but uh, yeah if you guys funny. want us to be the tmz of like the e-reader world and like make fun of people and not be like a serious news publication anymore breaking stories giving you guys that like, aren't you there know, the yeah. latest the latest in, in you know the latest news introspectives on digital publishing if you just want to be like oh my god lol, lol see the like you know watch watch you know them using an e-reader like in a bikini on a beach in like oh you know maui it's like we just sent a, like a photographer there out of hanging out of like a helicopter it cost us 10 million dollars to do it for this one picture all we have to do is release videos on youtube that say kindle oasis 5 has come out and then just play a Rick Roll over and over again, or like the the twentieth century entertainment intro, and that's all it'll be. You know what I mean? Like that will get us millions of views. That's like a it's a, it's a th- it's like it's like you see you know a movie comes out like Star Wars Episode Twelve, and it's like the trailer, official trailer bracket, official real exclamation mark. It's like twenty million views on it. You know what I mean? So and it's yeah. like and comments are the simple. Did you guys like my fan made? Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. Okay exactly uh anyways yeah no we're all good uh next year is gonna be a good year so um if you have anything else to add mike otherwise we're all good uh yeah let's talk about quick bits all right uh so the kindle lending library is set to close january 4th so this was like a program that like launched in like literally 2011 um and it was like a, a system where you could borrow one ebook a month for free but it really got like replaced by prime reading when it launched in 2016 and it had audiobooks at ebooks magazines graphic novels i mean marvel supported them and stuff so um you know the writing was on the wall that this was going to be discontinued for a long time but it's officially going to be gone on july 4th or sorry january 4th 2021 um yeah i mean net galley was hacked and uh people made away with got away with like email accounts and passwords and stuff so if you've ever gotten like arcs from netgalley you probably want to like change your login and password um barnes and noble and kobo are having sales for boxing day but basically boxing day is turned into boxing week i mean as you guys like literally all know so uh the nook glow light plus 7.8 is 30 dollars off and uh, the kobo libra h2o is 20 dollars off uh you can get them on the kobo official site barnes and noble official site in bookstores and walmart uh as well um Microsoft is working on their own custom ARM chips to power surface devices of the future. So this is similar to Apple Silicon, where they basically had everything contained within a single processor. So like RAM, like all all the most of the components of like everything was all contained in a singular chip. So Apple Silicon. So Microsoft is working on something similar. Uh, They're gonna do it in servers as well. But for most people who are interested sort of in tablets and stuff like that, future Microsoft services uh, will do that. Uh, Amazon is working on a new system to uh, license eBooks to public libraries. Uh, They're gonna be doing this through an established system uh, called Simp. Simple E, which is based on uh, the New York Public Library's e-reading app. It's basically like uh, a part of the DPLA. So um, Amazon is basically not going to uh, do books that are self-published through Kindle Direct Publishing. It's going to be more like an optional uh, opt-in type of thing for like Amazon's own imprints. So Amazon has like 11 type of imprints from mystery to romance like uh, monte black and you know things like that uh that they they sort of like run so it'll mostly be books from that but you know there there's been like a lot of outcry of libraries over the years that want amazon to make the books that they publish themselves available outside of the amazon kindle ecosystem because unless you have a kindle or you're using the kindle app you're not going to be able to read these books anywhere else. And libraries, especially like people that are pretty militant about like public access are really like, these are the types of people that like will encourage like the government to like uh, 
you know, to have antitrust suits against Amazon. They're becoming too powerful. They're controlling like publishing. We should do something about them and break them up, you know? So those are the types of people that you really don't want to piss off because they can create a lot of problems for yourself. So that's about it. We we encourage everyone to, who's on live chat right now to visit our Slack channel to continue the chat outside of like our, you know, uh, video here. But we, uh, we wish everyone like a happy new year and a Merry Christmas and all the best for 2021. And uh, I guess our next show is in the new year. That's right. January 2nd, we will, uh, we will hit you guys up. So be there or be square. That's a rectangle. You've ruined everything. We have to retake this whole video now. It's like L7. That's fine. No, no, you had it. It's just you got to be more actual. Like, no, you can't make your fingers are different lanes. You can't make a square out of that. You'd have to like backtrack it down a bit, but then you have overhang. So there's no you way know, you there's actually a pretty cool chick band called L7 because that's like basically an L and a seven, right? Oh, that's yeah, that's kind of cool actually. Yeah, they were like a cool punk chick band that I kind of dug like back in the day. Uh, yeah. So 